the, the VO is happening right now. So if this is Roxy's voice, so it's in her journal, what yeah. we're hearing. Mm-hmm. That means her journal included her transcribing a news report <laughs> from television. You know what? The news was on while I was trying to write that definition. I did not mean to write that last bit. <laughs> <laughs> and weekend weather after the break. End of journal entry. <laughs> Does your journal entry have a car commercial in it? Yeah. That's weird. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian Cinema because the mad scientists from MST3K got a little bit more chill as they got older. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting <laughs> 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend Heath and right Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. So you know what the Pony Express is doing right now? No, no idea. Apparently they're delivering pizza in Chicago right up the highway. <laughs> <laughs> Great. And unfortunately, we're going to be without Eli this week. He's taking the episode off for his birthday, but we're stoked to welcome back our special guest masochist, host of the Cognitive Dissonance podcast, that funny guy from Citation Needed, and the guy most likely to make Eli regret taking the episode off. That was Cecil. You are here, and Cecil, welcome back, sir. Thank you so much for having me without Eli on. I appreciate it. Genuinely (laughs) appreciate it. Well, you've been requesting it for a long time. I figured it was about... (laughs) About time to pull the trigger. When I miss stuff, you you introduce me. It's like, oh, Heath isn't here. He's in the KKK. Great. Moving on. <laughs> Cecil gets this big, great introduction. I don't, I don't, I don't think Cecil, you're, you're jealous of Cecil's introduction? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Heath Enright from Scathing Atheist and God Awful Movies. Thank you. All right. There uh, we go. So tell us, Heath. I am from those. So what will we be breaking down today? We watched Rumors of Wars. It's the story of the Antichrist becoming a billionaire and trying to take over the world with RFID chips. So it's a Bill Gates biography written by Robert F. Kennedy Jr. <laughs> in the movie. <laughs> and, and, and it has not aged well, let me tell you. So Cecil, no. how bad was this movie? I'm going to steal Eli Bosnick the way Eli Bosnick says this. If you like bad guy outfits from Captain America, but hate futuristic Venmo, you will love <laughs> this movie. Guaranteed. Also, well, just wherever. Yeah, you just right. throw one of those in if you want. Yeah, let's <laughs> apply liberally. Okay, so is there anything you guys yeah. want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I'm going with best worst MacGuffin. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's so stupid. The whole movie is about Christian people trying to figure out why this evil corporation is forcing people to put a chip in their hand. And they try to make this diary into the key to unlocking the secret, but (laughs) the secret is obviously just read the Bible. Right. So they keep trying to work in the diary, but every scene with the diary just has a Bible too, right next to it. And they have to cross reference. Right. And the diary just says like, yeah, yeah, man, see other MacGuffin. I don't know. It did whatever. (laughs) Why am I in the movie? The book of footnotes. Yeah. Well, and, yeah. and then when it doesn't do that, it's just completely random shit, right? Like the guy wrote his phone number in it. So the dude's looking for that guy. Like it, <laughs> yeah, exactly. it just randomly has something to do with the story after that. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's they built a MacGuffin to lead the characters to a second MacGuffin. <laughs> for no reason. Oh, so bad. Okay. Uh, I was going to go with best worst subtitles. They are so bad. Now, uh, subtitles on Pure Flix are a special, special thing to begin with. But this thing, like they got the proper form of your maybe five times total there, maybe twice. The characters names were Eli-esque in their spelling (laughs) variety. The, The punctuation was so sparse, you'd think they were paying extra for it. And for some damn reason, it was right justified to the center of the screen. So it was it was all just on the left half there and it was just, it was <sighs> fascinating. <laughs> mine, mine was in webdings too. It was strange. The best part was when they tried to spell out the automatopoeia that they were doing. Yes. It was the best. <laughs> when that, when someone would say when someone would say uh or huh, it would spell yeah. out like it would be like 16 characters long and yes. you're looking at the screen. Do you guys, that guy do you guys was work re- a schwa yeah. into your- he, was, <laughs> he was really ambitious. Whoever was typing that out was just ambitious. It was amazing. <laughs> All right. 
<laughs> I'm going to go with best worst use of a famous actor to tell a cow story. <laughs> I thought that, I mean, what the fuck? That's a random cow story in the middle. And it has nothing to do with anything. Nothing. <laughs> nothing at all. <laughs> what the fuck? Fuck. It's even a bad metaphor. It doesn't even mean anything. And you watch it. Nope. Like, I'm sitting there thinking like, okay, he's really going to hammer this cow story, right? <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't even make any sense. They brought in the big guns for the cow story. You think you're going to get a good cow story. No, I have, a, I have a theory on this. Okay, so Eric Roberts appears in this movie for like 90 fucking seconds for no goddamn reason to tell this cow story. And I honestly think this cow story is like just a talk he gives. Oh, right. Like this is just something he already does. He goes to conventions or something and he gives, this is the opening of his talk. So he's like, all right, guys, I'll give you 90 seconds, but it's going to have to be the speech that I already do. I'm not learning new <laughs> shit for you. Right. I got, I got this cow I'm, story. Down I'm, I'm thinking they just did a sound test with Eric yeah. Roberts. And they were like, Tell a story or something. And they're like, you know what? Cut. We got it. We got it. That is so much better than what we wrote. <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you what. Heath and I have done exactly this movie 412 times already. So while we think of yet another way to skin this cat, we're going to pause for a quick break. But we'll be back soon with all the clunky flashbacks that are rumors of wars. Hey, Cecil. Really appreciate you dropping by with Eli off this week. Are you kidding? I'm actually kind of flattered that you thought I was funny enough to sub in for Eli on an episode. That's pretty awesome. It, we thought you were what now? That I was. Um, hey, uh, he, did we uh, did we find somebody hairy enough to replace Eli on this week's Manscaped ad? <laughs> yeah, did we ever? Oh wow, Cecil, even hairier. Great job, Heath. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. You guys wanted me here because I'm hairy. Of course we did, silly. The hairiest. Why do you think we wanted you here? Well, I thought. What was, what was your theory? Actually, I'm. <laughs> Embarrassed to admit. Well, I'd be embarrassed I, if I was as hairy as you too, Cecil, but don't worry. Okay. Now there's something you can do about it, especially now that Manscaped has released their brand new Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer. And in your case, not a moment too soon. Okay, I am not entirely comfortable where this is going, guys. I'm not. No, that's okay, Cecil. That's okay. Manscaped's proprietary skin safe technology helps prevent nicks, snags, and tugs in those delicate holes. Plus, the premium Manscaped Weed Whacker uses a 9,000 RPM motor-powered 360-degree rotary blade system. And I know how much you love to know the degrees of your blades. And right. its contoured design enhances the trimming experience. I do like an enhanced trimming experience. I will say that. Well, it's even waterproof, which makes for easy operation and cleaning. And yes, you get a replaceable blade every three months to keep your weed whacking time clean and enjoyable. That's right, fellas. 79% of partners polled admitted that long nose hair is a major turnoff. And you've really got to worry about those other 21%. It's super weird that you know that, Heath. And best of all, you can get 20% off and free shipping with the code AWFUL at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code AWFUL. What are you waiting for? Go whack your weeds. I did not know you guys were going to make me the butt of the joke here. That is just... Wow. Well, dude, we asked you to stand in for Eli. Oh, you know what? It actually, all this makes sense now. That is fair. All right, now shoot us in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm No Illusions. And I'm Heath Enright. And I'm the weird dog unicorn hybrid plumber you guys have. You're, uh, you're, on your show. you're Carl the Pug of Pegacorn. I'm Carl the Punky Pug of Corn. And we're here to tell you about the importance of voting. That's right, Noah. The importance of voting and how Marsh did COVID. And I really, the guys, why would I say, and I really like garlic bread? What, what yeah, is it, that? It's, it's, it's Carl's thing. I don't know. He likes garlic bread or something. Okay, but isn't it weird that I say that? Like, I don't. Don't try to make sense of it, Cecil. Just, just roll with it, man. But why? I don't get why, though. Because I have no idea where the punchlines even are anymore, man. Yeah, it's, it's what? Usually, confusing. everything is a meta reference to an inside bit about a call forward. Now, Cecil, Eli's been re re writing the skit so long that we're nine layers deep in a Christopher Nolan script, and I just keep mouthing the words in hopes that somebody out there's been paying attention long enough to understand where the internal references end and where I begin. Okay, Noah. Noah, are you okay? The Sean Penn thing was supposed to be bees. 
bees. Who the hell knew that? Why was it supposed to be bees? None of it makes any sense anymore. Okay, okay. Just, it's, it's, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. <sighs> and I really like garlic bread. You sure do, Carl. Lou, 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 jingly keys. Guan Dage. What's stamps.com? <laughs> And we're back for the breakdown. We're going to open up on either like a post-apocalyptic world or the Philippines. Um, but, <laughs> but the subtitle says yeah. the future to, to clue us in, to help us out there. Just to, you know, anytime in the future, Some whenever. Point, not Next week now, in Detroit could be, yeah. you know, <laughs> for sure. For sure. Uh, typing comes back in. Sorry, that was really vague. Not like tomorrow or like Detroit. <laughs> I think we're week. talking years, though. Years. I mean, like kind of far. Not too far. Uh, medium. Not yeah. to where we have to come up with new tech or anything. Yeah, <laughs> I don't no. want you to like no. call us on this in a podcast. Yeah. We don't do it's well not- with times. Yeah, so we see a truck full of soldiers, and I'm like, well, I still don't know if it's Detroit, the Philippines, or the post-apocalypse, goddammit, yeah. but it's, it's the post-apocalypse. <laughs> so we get this group of soldiers that are out like looking for... Christian insurgent hostiles that haven't turned themselves into the one world government to be beast marked yet. Yeah. <laughs> right. 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 And they're all talking on their police scanner, but they sound, they sound like Stephen Hawking using a Johnny five plug-in. Like yes! it's the weirdest, <laughs> it's the weirdest sound. Great sound. <laughs> it is so strange. They, they did like triple voc effects on it. So it's barely recognizable as words. It's so crazy. It doesn't sound like anything at all. Guys, do you auto tune the radio yeah. frequency? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they got cops talking to each other. That's weird. So while they're doing this, the one thing they say that stuck out to me <laughs> over the radio, there's like the guy back at the base being like, Treachery in progress, corner of whatever and whatever as they're rolling around. <laughs> yeah, what? And treachery in progress. Like, <laughs> they, they analyze the emotional intent of some vandal who's like spray painting a wall. <laughs> treachery in progress. Treachery? So, oh, and at gosh. the same time that this is going on, of course, we cut into the treacherous Christians inside, oh, right? Yeah. Just yeah. trying to live their lives. And one kid is going like, hey, maybe we should join the the New World Order. Yeah. <laughs> I love this kid so goddamn much because they tried to make an arc out of this kid, but oh, then yeah, they, they gave up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he looks like a kid, like a reject from Slytherin, doesn't he? Yeah. Doesn't he look <laughs> yes. like a reject? 100% <laughs> looks like that. And he, and as soon as he comes on the screen, you know he's going to be a bad guy. From the yep. first moment he speaks, you're up that kid, that's going to be a bad guy. You know it. It's super yep. easy to telegraph this shit. Yeah. And we also pan across the whole group of just, you know, smudgy post-apocalypse Christian people yep. trademark. It's like <laughs> they're, they're like playing poker with rubble for chips, just passing that, rubbing dirt on each other's faces, just because that's what. Hey, could you get my back? I want to be uh, yeah, exactly. Oh. I don't want to be unevenly smudgy. Also, so the the kid comes in and he says, the bad guys are right outside. Maybe we should join them. And there's this uh, like one like wizened Christian guy says, but son, they'll brainwash you. You won't be able to think for yourself. Better to stay a checks notes. Christian. (laughs) 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 So the music is saying life and death suspense. The actor's sense of urgency says that we're going to be late for this field trip if everybody doesn't line up, right? No, yeah. two lines. Pick up your chairs, <laughs> hold them in front. <laughs> we're going to the all-purpose room. So, but yeah, but the bad guys, the alliance does manage to come in and like, you know, rustle up all these Christians. They they, they get them as they're trying to scatter. <laughs> can we can we talk about the uniforms for the yes. alliance? Oh, God. Yes. <laughs> So, yes, we're uh, don't don't forget, everybody. We're in the future anytime from now to now and then like till wherever till yep. infinity. Yeah. Yep. We're in the future. The future is represented by <laughs> turtlenecks, strong turtlenecks. Oh, yeah. Like, really yeah. power turtlenecks yeah. and roller hockey pads. Yeah. Which is they got to have <laughs> some protection against <laughs> the Christians. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's a roller hockey. Pad. And then there's one Mr. Clean looking guy. He's the, clearly the evil one. The bald guy yes, is clearly right. the evil one. You know, you could He's see. He's an evil roller hockey instructor. That's yeah. what we're looking at. <laughs> yeah, no? we're shouting. We all stop shouting? Jesus, why are you all <laughs> shouting? So, yeah, that is 266. 
he's important. We'll uh we'll we'll come back to him. Yeah, and yes, all the bad guys have numbers. There's two six six four oh eight is also a major character. We'll meet three twenties. It's so fucking stupid. Who am I? <laughs> two six six. <laughs> oh, oh, at the beginning. No, that doesn't work. So, okay. That's a bad no. Should I start I have to start lower to hit that high note? All right, so, can we do that again? <laughs> So we cut upstairs. There's still some rebels hiding out, but don't worry. The Alliance is cleaning those guys up with smoke bombs, right? They're throwing smoke bombs in and just shooting all of the good guys as they walk out. Yeah, smoke bombs. The the, the flashbang they bought at Walgreens on sale oh after God. the 4th of July. It's on the clearance <laughs> rack. It's, it's Seriously, you could buy this as a 10-year-old. It's the yeah. lamest smoke bomb you've ever seen. Yeah. It's, it's one of those smoke bombs where it doesn't even like forcefully shoot the smoke out. It kind of just hangs there like they lit a bunch of patchouli <laughs> incense. It's ridiculous. Yeah, see, so I got bad news for you. 10-year-olds could buy all the rest of their weapons. Yeah, that's Walmart, true. Yeah, oh, actually, no, that's yeah. fair. Okay, so. now I forgot. This is America. Yeah. <laughs> Depends on the state, you know, yeah. Tennessee. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So meanwhile, we, we have this one guy. He like tries to run from the bad guys, but he's not faster than a bullet. So he, he doesn't make it very far. But he comes across the, the bitchy kid that was thinking about joining the bad guys. And he's got this journal and he's like, hey, kid, keep my journal safe. And then he dies. <laughs> And then the bad guy's coming around and the kid's like, hey, I found this journal. <laughs> <laughs> that little kid rolled over like a Trump campaign advisor. As soon as he came around the corner, he's like, whatever you want, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'm an atheist. I'll suck an atheist dick right now. Watch. Watch how you I don't even care. Exactly. It's pretty fun, too, when the guy's like dying and he's like, take my diary it has the truth about the universe and i wanted the kid to be like no <laughs> well, he was though he totally <laughs> was he totally did but yeah so that leaves the so that leaves the journal the MacGuffin, in the hands of a different bad guy this is 408 he's gonna be our main character and you could tell he wasn't he wasn't a hundred percent into mass murdering these christians earlier right so so our title screens don't get any more specific. This one says years earlier. Yeah, it does say. <laughs> and we cut to a jogger jogging joggly. So this is, by the way, why we brought Cecil on. For his and expertise. I will say, <laughs> excellent four foot technique. As she, you know, <laughs> well, there perfect, you go. <laughs> leaning the perfect amount, a definite good arm swing on her. Very nice technique. Got All right, good. Good to yeah. know. Wow, that sounds like a really complex sport. Yeah. <laughs> it's a skill. I hurt so, myself running wait, so many so times. It's, so it's, it's, it's left, right, left, right. <laughs> it is. It is. Oh, keep it up. That's mean. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, she, But as she's jogging, she hears news about an explosion at a military base near Chicago. That's all the details they give us, by the way. Those lazy yeah. fuckers could not be bothered to look up a military base near Chicago. There is one. It's in Waukegan. It's 50 miles away from Chicago and it's Great Lakes Naval Academy. It is not an Air Force base. <laughs> there is Air Force dead littered throughout this movie, but there's no Air Force that are stationed there. So it's just a dumb... Interesting. A, they didn't bother to look it up. So Amazing. Question, it, is that Air Force place a giant, very clearly Chicago high-rise building? <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> that right? is exactly what they show us. That certainly did, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I just I thought, wow, first scene, we got jogging and Chicago. Cecil was the perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so, but one of the soldiers killed in that bombing was jogging girl's husband. Very, very sad, right? Yeah, and they, there's a TV scene here where they're interviewing a soldier. And I have a quote here, what the soldier says. The soldier says, it seems that the impact was through the roof, but at this time, we firmly believe it came through the top. Like, the what? roof is the top. <laughs> Why are you saying but in that sentence? When you say but, it's to not agree with what you just said. Like, it's, you agree. It's the top. Like, what is, who wrote this? We investigated the theory of a uh, team of literal moles carrying the bomb from the ground <laughs> through the top of the, the floor. floor. We seems, ruled that out. Seems yeah. very unlikely when we when we yeah. said it out loud. <laughs> so, through the top. Yeah. Yeah. 
And this, by the way, it's very confusing here, but this is all a flashback that she's having while she's jogging. Oh, right? yeah, she yeah, that's flashes right. back to when her uh, husband died in the bombing, and then she flashes back to his funeral. And then we we cut back to her jogging, and she's like, and that's when it, like the military got really bad, and we see like random soldiers behind her beating up random people for no discernible oh, reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. just to give everybody uh, the time frame, I get, this is now, we're, what, months, days, minutes, and seconds later from years earlier? We're, from so, <laughs> <the future? laughs> so, so we were in a flashback in a flashback, so I can see why you were confused. It's years earlier than the future. Years <laughs> earlier. Still. Oh, that's all of them. Okay. Yep. <laughs> So bad. <laughs> what the fuck? Well, no, it could have been small then, and then it could still be in the future from now. All right, well, yep, anyway, yep, no, that's where right. we are. Yep. Got it. Mm -hmm. Any of the times. Yeah. So, but eventually, so she finishes her jogging. She jogs her way all the way to her college history class, which means that she jogs for like her commute. <laughs> she, she must just <laughs> arrive at class smelling wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Also, that is not Chicago. <laughs> Fuck you. That's not Chicago. No, I know they keep calling it no, Chicago. It's, it's Grand Rapids, it's, Michigan. Yep, is where it from sure there. is. At Cornerstone Christian University, I believe. It is yeah. definitely not Chicago. So, yeah. <laughs> nope, but they're going to keep saying Chicago Absolutely. as long as they can yeah. get away with it. And also, what the fuck is with her accent? Like, her accent is so bad. It's like <laughs> London, but like London, Ontario, not London, England. It's just the worst. <laughs> Also, it's, I think she's going for British or, you know, British Ontario, um, but <laughs> o only for the nouns. Only selectively, like, right? yeah. Which is a weird pick. See, now I thought she was British and trying to do an American accent, but I couldn't <laughs> tell. <laughs> She almost hurt herself several times yes. where she like started to bend out of it and was like, dang, wow, <laughs> her vowel so, British. All right. So she gets to her, her history class. Again, we're still in a flashback from the future. She gets to her history class. And instead of learning history, there's a student advocate by the name of Lee Richardson. He'll be important later. Who's there to tell us about the new RFID Satan chip. I mean, regular chips that everyone's going to get in their hands now. <laughs> it's a normal chip everybody's going to get. Yeah. You know, just for, for like meal plans and stuff. You're yeah. Gonna just Mark of the Beast. Six, what? Six what? <laughs> Can we? Did you say Mark of the Beast? You dial yeah. back just a. But okay. So he tells, he turns to all of the kids, it, it, the students, and he says, and I quote, please click the link on the main page of your servers. <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> the, uh, oh, you man. mind? Hold on. I'm just going to run this phone cord to my AOL account yeah. on the side of the room. Give me a second. <laughs> the fuck are you talking about? Oh, God. I love how he sells it too because he, he tries to sell it as, well, hey, guys, it's, you know, it's going to do this and this for you and this and this. You could pay with it. And you get 20% off the bookstore. And I'm thinking, yeah, yeah you 20% off another 180% marked up glorified notebook that the campus bookstore is selling as a required text <laughs> that your fucking stupid professor put out there. That's an amazing deal. Amazing deal. Thank you for upcharging me and then downcharging me afterwards with your stupid chip, assholes. Yeah. A, ch a chip which is... It's a smartphone, right, man? You're just yeah, like, we right? already have those. You're saying we put a smartphone in our... Can we just keep using our phones instead? Yeah. <laughs> Can Apple Pay instead? Like, what the fuck? Well, yeah, and that's what's so amazing about this, right? Because the whole Christian paranoid scheme around 666 is this idea that they're going to put some tracking device in you that you'll use to pay and blah, blah. But we just already all have that. We have all of those things you just described. So it just so undercuts the whole concept that they had in the Left Behind days, but they haven't updated it at all. Wait, I get, what I don't get is, like, cash money somehow crushes it? Like, cash money has all the same problems as paying with your fucking weird chip hand. Like, you're still <laughs> exploited for your labor, right? Like, fucking yeah. what the fuck? <laughs> Right, well, right, right, because the idea that, that that they present later is that, like, yes, but once you're dependent on the government for your money, then they can turn it are. off. It's like, yeah, well, they can already do that, though. Yeah. You still, <laughs> yeah, no fucking clue. Uh, but yeah, but so, but her history professor isn't so sure about this implantable <laughs> microchip everyone's required to get. 
oh, this professor is the greatest. So it starts with a shot of him and him being like super likable and interesting and incisive. And he's like, very clearly the part was like, yeah, it's a it's David Barton, PhD. <laughs> but yep. it's played by like budget Bill Pullman, who's supposed to look nice and not look like a fucking cowboy costume from a children's store at Halloween. <laughs> and he is the like libertarian, whatever conspiracy theory guy, but smart in a positive way. The movie is quite certain. Yes, yeah, and exactly. On <laughs> on the chalkboard behind him. It says like John F. Kennedy, and it's supposed to be a lesson about JFK. And one of the only notes on the board besides JFK's name is Lyndon Johnson killed Kennedy? Question. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? The fuck? I missed that. I'm what? Only, I can't believe I missed that. Yep. <laughs> Amazing. That's real. I also like too that the chip placement on this is on your, it's on your right hand mm -hmm. just below your thumb and in between your thumb and forefinger. And that is the perfect chip placement. If you're a teenage boy and it's like one of those mm. self winding watches, yeah, they'll, right. they'll never run out of power. <laughs> it's never going to run out of power. It's just got to be waterproof and it'll last forever. Forever. It's guaranteed. <laughs> be running after you're dead. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, so yeah, but the professor's not too sure about this chip thing, and so he starts yelling at the guy who's who's telling him about the chip, and he's like, "Get out of my classroom!" He's like, "Okay," but they still have to get the, you know, they still need the twenty percent off of their books and shit. He kicks him. Also, out. you know, just to be clear, um, this this is a law. Me leave, I'll leave, but me leaving <laughs> yeah. doesn't stop laws yeah. from being real. You're not like nothing's happening right now when I leave. Just so you know. Yeah, yeah right. Nothing happening. will stop the Zern Corporation from yeah, implanting it's like a everything. Fucking, it's <laughs> Zern yeah. is a faucet brand. I don't like what the fuck, man. <laughs> yeah, so that guy leaves and he's just like, okay, fine, I'm out of here. Thanks for listening to my presentation from Zern Global Incorporated. Their logo is Demon Horns. Okay, bye. Yeah. <laughs> and we see their logo for a second on his little projector. It's so stupid. It's like it the is. most obvious giant <laughs> demon horns coming out. Yeah, yeah. Can I ask a question to you guys? Because you guys watch a lot of these movies. I thought professors were all bad. This is the first one that wasn't. Okay. All right. Okay. Oh, no. I just wanted yeah, the, to make sure. This, this guy's in the intellectual dark web, but he's yeah. a genius. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, like, like Alex Jones origin story, I figure would be like good things for them. Like they would <laughs> like that, that sort of thing. But, but I just, I, I was, I've seen, I want to say four of these movies already that have had a professor in them that is clearly a, it's clearly a, an evil person, right? It's yes, clearly always. somebody who is constantly trying to, and so this is the first time I've ever seen a professor that's actually good, but but it, like like he said, he's teaching, are you detained 102 or whatever? So he's a libertarian. <laughs> right, yeah, <exactly. laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I was struck by the same thing, Cecil. I believe this is the most sympathetic college professor we've ever seen in Christian okay. film. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I thought they would show him in the faculty room and the, all the other professors just like, Flick in the back of his head and like pulling his <laughs> pants down and tying his shoes together. All right. So wait, oh, man. I got to point out this one last line too. persecuting me. <laughs> after everybody, after the, the Zern global guy leaves, he turns back to his students. He goes, and I quote, everybody pull out your tablets and your laptops and turn to page 39. <laughs> Of the internet. It's like computer tech in an 80s sitcom. It really it is. Was so it's so amazing. <laughs> All right. So so we head back to like the future or whatever, where 408, that's the devil soldier guy who got the journal, is standing over the burning book barrel or whatever and, and telling off 327, his subordinate soldier who doesn't seem as excited as he should be about burning Bibles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is this is the guy who he's like he says something about uh, at at a certain point he says they're throwing in stuff and one of the guys says something about these books are dangerous and the other one says they are I mean clearly question mark at the end the guy looks at him the the 
the hero of the movie looks at him, the supposed hero of the movie looks at him and says, excuse me? And the guy said, I mean, they are. Like, he they doesn't are. understand. Oh, <laughs> he oh, doesn't clarity. understand. I went down inflection. at the end. I did yeah, an up I'm, down. I, I did an up the and then I went a down. I'm a I'm bad inflection guy. I don't know how to do this. I'm just badly <laughs> I socialized. That reminder. I sing oh. all, everything I say always ends on a high note. High note. High note. Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> oh, and I love to. Okay, this is all taking place in a in a grain elevator area, yeah. and so okay, low fuck? budget post apocalypse movies love motherfucking grain elevators. Like, look for oh, it; yeah. you'll see them everywhere in zombie movies and shit because they always look like no one's touched them for four hundred fucking years, right? <laughs> I feel like they went around and like scouted for places, and they were just like, ah, oh, none of these have catwalks. We really <laughs> need evil catwalks, right? And oh, and this is also where they play like the the orientation video for all the new <laughs> prisoner slash recruits. Yeah, this is like they put the they put the orientation video on, and that they they clearly have hologram technology. But again, the sound sounds like they ran it through noise reduction four hundred times. It sounds <laughs> yes. so bad. It sounds so bad. It sounds like you recorded it on a media and then recorded it on an old timey reel to reel, and then stepped on the tape and then put it back digital. It's the worst sounding record. And you're like, the picture looks great, guys. What is wrong with the sound? <laughs> Can't we? change our focus a bit on yeah. the tech. <laughs> Get in somebody of- in here to tune this you thing up. you the lawnmower man? You know yeah. that's bad, right? Yeah. You know that's a bad movie? <laughs> that's what's happening here. But yeah, it's this like beautiful, attractive woman on the hologram being like, welcome to Zern Global, the Halliburton of the apocalypse. <laughs> and everybody's like, Wee, yay, sweet, free turtlenecks, woo! And then... <laughs> She's just like, uh, and the logo is not Demon Horns. It's just, just a, clear. It's a calf. End of my speech. It's fallopian yeah. tubes, actually. So, and we're done. <laughs> so, uh, feminist. All right. So now 408 and 266. God, this is so fucking stupid. Are, are being debriefed about today's executions. And this is where we meet their commander, who is the main character from War Room. He was also in Courageous and A Question of Faith and at least yep. four other movies with titles so generically Christian that I honestly can't tell you if we've watched them or not. Um, he's backflip guy, right? He's backflip guy, exactly. I have him down okay. as Commander Backflip for the rest of the movie. <laughs> That's all I remember for in that movie. His asshole friend being like, hey, everybody, check it out. Uh, this is my friend. He's black. No big deal. Do a backflip, man. Do a backflip. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was him. So... All right, so this is the scene where, like, he gets promoted, right? So, like, bald guy, uh, 266, is his, like, rival that doesn't like him very much. But Commander Backflip in this scene promotes 408 <laughs> to be 266's equal. I feel like you just say the rank, you know? Yeah, but he, right? says, he says, I'm going to promote you to be the same rank as 266. Oh, I'm going to be, like, a co-manager? Yeah, what? <laughs> I don't think... <laughs> I'm just saying, like, you, you remember the office when there was the two, co- it didn't work. Uh, the workplace flow, it's going to be weird. Just both equal. <laughs> Am I still going to do his performance review or are you going to do that? <laughs> right, yeah, it's going to be very awkward. <laughs> how is this going to work? <laughs> so, so, yeah, so 266 storms off. He's very upset about this. And and then the commander, Commander Backflip, grabs 408 <laughs> and he, he puts his arm around him and he's like, you know, son, the premise of this movie is dot, dot, dot. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is line. Hold on. His line is amazing. Oh, <laughs> you know, our mission is close at hand. We're near perfection at reaching our goal of a unified society than ever before. And that is word for word. What yes. I just read for you <laughs> yes. is word for word. Yet there are secret groups banding together to Creating distress is what he says after. <laughs> None of that. I, I listened to it three times and I'm like, you're not using tenses right. Something's wrong. Something's really wrong That's with that sentence. Nonsense. It's like he had a stroke mid sentence. It's crazy. Okay. Well, point being, now that you're co manager, yeah. you uh, are going to need to uh, kidnap a lot more Christians to hit your quotas. Yeah, yeah, that's you know, right. Oh, other that's number right. guy yeah. that I already forgot. Like, th- yeah. this is a big fiscal quarter for us, is what I'm saying. Yeah. It's a big fiscal quarter. He was mad because they killed him. He was mad they killed the, the Christians. He wanted to 
convert the Christians. Enslave and he got, them. Yeah, and he got yeah. super mad at the at Mr. Clean because he shot him. Two six him. six. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mr. Yeah. Clean. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this movie is so cool. fucking. There's a lot of quota talk. Oh, boss. <laughs> just uh, one last thing. Do we need the roller hockey pads for these meetings? Can we just not <laughs> right now? Because we're just in an office, right? <laughs> Always wear the hockey pads. God he damn it. He slips and falls. Ah, oh, my wrist. Okay, I understand now. The wrist guard. Yep, I broke it. I broke it. So, wait, so, so right before 408 is about to leave, though, the boss calls him back. He says, hold on one other thing. There's a traitor in our midst, and we need you to go kill him real quick. Now that you're promoted, you got to take out the trash now and again, right? So oh, go kill yeah. 327. You, you want me to kill him? So, I'm just seems like if you already know he's a traitor, go kill him. <laughs> <laughs> you think you'd handle that already? It's like a traitor. Oh, I hope it's a doesn't understand inflection guy. I hate that guy. I hate that guy. <laughs> oh, and it totally is. It totally is. Yeah. So I'm going to kill you. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Prepare to die. <laughs> so, so he goes to 327 Spunk. 327 isn't there. So he. He looks at his watch, which I shit you not says RFID across the bottom in case you didn't get it. It totally does. It totally does. And and he starts uh, tracking the, the guy. And of course, it's a thing that tracks in movies. So it's beeping. And I'm yeah, like, wait, yeah. does his watch just always beep like that? Or and this is even worse. Is the beep coming from 327's hand tracker? <laughs> Just a bunch of them sitting in that office. Okay, these beeps are crazy. They're not yeah. even lined up. We can't, I can't get work done like this. What? I'm trying to do paperwork. I'm putting the, the numbers of the enslavements into the spreadsheet for the fiscal quarter. This is crazy. Beep, 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 beep. And yeah, the worst part is that not, the beeps aren't synced, so it sounds like a constant beep. It's like the beginning of Baba O'Reilly, but not fun, man. This is ridiculous. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. So, all right. So he comes across 327. 327 is reading his Bible. He turns to 408 and he goes, I knew they'd send you. And he goes, really? How? He's like, well, you and the bald guy are the only other known characters, really. I mean, I'm just, <laughs> I, mean, I, I am weird inflection guy, so it couldn't be me. I mean, yeah, okay. <laughs> weird that you know it would be me. I just got promoted in the last scene. You weren't there. I figured you, you knew it was me. Be though. Yeah. Also, you're talking weird. Did, did you want to like spin around slowly in a chair? To, <laughs> you want to start over and then say, I knew you'd come. I feel like that'd be more impactful for you. Okay. No, we'll right. just go straight into you don't, it. You don't you. even have glasses. You're going to take off your med. Okay. All right. All right. Well, then never mind then. But yeah, so 327 starts giving him the hard sell on explaining that, no, it turns out that the Christians are actually the good guys and we're the bad guys. Yeah. Yeah. He says, yeah. We persecute innocent people, Shaw. I'm thinking, yeah, unlike the Bible, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. okay, sure. <laughs> He's sitting there reading a Bible. Yeah, well, that's that's his speech. Yeah. <laughs> that's his actual speech. He's like, we're killing innocent people. The Bible, which I've been reading, says we should not do that. The other guy's like, you sure about that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to read ahead? How come how much you get into that? I know we just picked it up like an hour ago, but maybe turn to, I don't know, any other page. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then you dash the child's head against rock. Okay, oh, you know wow. what? No, we're, yeah, okay, you know, we're yeah. good. We need to shoot yeah. these motherfuckers. You are right. <laughs> so, so yeah. So 408 shoots him in the chest, right? They weren't going to do heads in here because they didn't want to upset Christian moms. We mentioned earlier that they do exchange the names for people. So Shaw is 408, whatever. Mm -hmm. But this 327's yeah. name is Phoenix. Oh, I miss it's Phoenix. That. It's Phoenix because somebody just took writing screenplays 102. Thank you very much. <laughs> and we call that a metaphor. So yeah, at Phoenix Cornerstone is Christian Community College Phoenix, or whatever the guys. hell that was. Yep. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to point that out. <laughs> Fucking stupid. It's amazing. His name is Jesus Christ 0387. There you go. <laughs> All right, so then we, we wind up back in, like, the modern day where oh, uh, Roxy, that's the girl that was jogging at the beginning, the girl whose journal this is, Roxy awakes to the terrible news about yet another explosion, this one in Miami. Also looked a lot like Grand Rapids, Michigan. Yeah, really did. <laughs> really did. Yeah. So just to be clear here, the evil atheist plan is to slowly 
bomb low level suburban malls. Uh, apparently. <laughs> yeah. And then global domination right yeah. after that. <laughs> well, so so you you missed an important step. They got a they're gonna bomb low level suburban malls and then get newscasters to say things like many people are pretty sure it's religious. <laughs> so, <laughs> religious? Yes, that's right. They totally do that. More after the break? Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, clearly this story is taking its fucking time, which means that we have permission to do the same. So we're going to take a quick break, but we're back in a flash with even more rumors of wars. 819, 382, get in here. Uh, Yeah, boss. What's up? I need you guys to relieve 144 and 326 and tell them to help 539 and 373 at the perimeter. Yes, sir. Uh, Sir? Yes, 382. Well, Sir, it's um, it's about the numbers. Not this again. Well, okay, it's just that you know I'm Dale. He's he's Larry. You're but Nick. No, regular names actually have fewer syllables. They're they're easier to remember. I just don't understand what advantage we gain from using the numbers. Yeah, right, right. And plus, there's going to be a thousand of us, and then I just become like zero. Eight nineteen. Do you put a oh, zero yeah. in front of Good that? Question, right? No, right? Damn, right? How would that look, even work? Guys, we've been over this. We've taken away your names and given you numbers, like in the Secret Agent song. But, but we don't. We call each other by our names just all the time and numbers, just pretty much interchangeably. So I don't even get the loss of identity that, that this dehumanizing process would normally gain you. It doesn't even make any sense. He's right. Yeah, we do. I don't understand. Damn it, two eighty three. It. <sighs> It's 382. Sir. Uh, See? I'm so sorry. This is also the problem with what you do. You know, you know, know what? enough. The- We're doing the numbers because I said so, and that's all there is to it. Now, you two are dismissed. Y- yes, sir. Hey, uh, 382. I'm not in the mood, 819. Two's on first base. God damn it. <laughs> And we're back and we're going to open up on 408 getting caught looking at uh, post-apocalypse porn, i.e. a book. <laughs> it totally does. Like, what are you doing? I was not jerking off, though. What? What? <laughs> how long have you been standing that's, there? How long totally have you been standing place. right there? Yeah, right. How have, what did you see? What? The Song of Solomon? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this guy's such a fucking idiot. Like nine times he gets caught reading this book. I'm like, turn your back to the door. Just read it in the bathroom. What the <laughs> so hell is true. wrong yeah. with you? Scan uh, it into your phone or your hand or whatever, man. Just don't <laughs> yeah. carry around the thing. Can you imagine if your porn was in your hand, though? That would be so un- uh, inconvenient. So, yeah, <laughs> you, you, your neck would hurt so bad. Yeah, by you the keep moving your head the whole time. It's bouncing up and down. I can't focus on this. It's just hard to focus. I need a selfie stick. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just going to get camera stabilization on this. And then we'll just go from there. Yeah. Hey, can Good you stuff. hold this, boss? <laughs> no. What? <laughs> All right, so then we we cut back to the modern day, right? Or, you know, whatever the years before the future was. <laughs> Earlier before the medium after. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So so Roxy shows up at her history class and she has a new professor. Remember when she had poor man's Mark Hamill there telling her all about how he was being detained <laughs> and shit? Well, he's not here anymore. They've got this... <laughs> we've got this evil professor. You can tell by the faux German yes. British... <laughs> communist he's, accent yep. he's talking so over the top silly just like hello i'm your new history professor who is normal Norm- not evil <clears throat> sorry it's coughing Mwah. no uh hello history atheist history nope so just regular what i love is that he's got a he uh, no you're right he's got like a faux german accent so he's like Hello, sir. How are you doing? <laughs> and he's got like he's got like that like little squeak, and it sounds like uh, well, she sounds like Nick Cage as a Brit, and he sounds like Colonel Clink. It's like the <laughs> dueling bad accent. It's the worst. It's so bad. <laughs> And yeah, and he's like, instead of having history class today, we're all gonna go get our Mark of the Beast chips that you guys yeah. didn't okay. get yesterday. So just to be clear, Zern Global's 
plan, the company mm-hmm. that yep. is running mm-hmm. the global domination, their plan the, for the taking over the world maker, yes. is uh, it involves fake history professors yep. at this like community <laughs> college. It feels involved. 50 miles outside of yeah. Chicago. It feels involved, right? I also like, <laughs> you're a college student. You're like, oh yeah, yeah. I just I pay seventeen hundred bucks a credit hour, but yeah, let's end class early to go get hand yeah. job PayPal. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Sounds great. Right? Yeah. Fuck, Fuck you. you. Teach me, bitch. You're my monkey for the next hour. Fuck you. <laughs> yes. The fuck out of here! But they're all like, "Oh, captain, my captain," and they yeah, stand up exactly. on the desk and yeah. they get the chips. Yeah. Like, I don't, I didn't pay you for a field trip. Open a fucking book, asshole! I don't care if people weird like, "Yes, hello, sir. How are you?" Asking, get the fuck up there. Teach me about U.S. history, or are you detained one hundred and two, or whatever the fuck you were teaching? Right. Yeah, exactly. Get the fuck out hey, of here. Tell us about Germany in the nineteen thirties, really quick, <laughs> here, history professor. Right? All right, so now, okay, so we, we cut to this line where they're all waiting to get their chips, and it turns out that when Roxy and her friend get to the front of the line, it's that same guy from the history class that they that they kicked out yesterday, right, that was trying to get him. So, and he's yeah. flirting hardcore with Roxy. Yeah, he's the student advocate for <laughs> Zern Global. Yeah. What? And he brags about this, and he's like, my name's Lee Richardson, here's my phone number, I'm a student advocate for Zern, no big deal. So, <laughs> again, just no to be deal. clear, Zern Global also has student advocates at every college as part of their global <laughs> conspiracy. What? It's like what a lot of the work. Plan? <laughs> so stupid. Feels like a lot of paperwork, too, because at a certain point, they walk up, and nobody has ever heard of Zern Global, because as soon as they show up at the desk, the lady, that lady who was asking how much calories was in, like, a, a cliff bar earlier or whatever, is saying, when Zern Global is... And the guy never gets a chance to answer, but it's like, it's a faucet company trying to take over the world. Just fucking sign here. <laughs> sign your soul away. You get a free faucet and a chip in your hand. I like to be at least moderately familiar with the companies that yeah. insert electronics into exactly my body. Right. Tell me again. About- Listen, I've be- read a book. I know yeah. about big faucet. I'm not doing this. <laughs> Is there a terms of service I have to sign? Can I just check a box? Like, what's happening? Right? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, and I love that we have to we have to have the quick scene of the asshole behind them in line that you know it's trying to fuck up Lee Richards's <laughs> flirting game. <laughs> yeah. He gets mad and he's like, "All right, Daphne, Thelma, let's go." Topical Scooby Doo nailed it. And they're like, <laughs> "Okay, well, it's it's Velma, it's not Thelma, you fucking idiot." But uh. Whatever, we're getting this guy's phone number. He's a student advocate of <laughs> Zerb. I'm going to fuck the shit out of him. Can, so can, much can we talk? Good deal on faucets. For a second, about how fucking stupid it is to get an electronic chip in your hand, but yet you have to sign physical paperwork. Like, why am I even getting the chip? What the fuck is that about? Why am I getting a chip? I still have to use this dumbass pen? Are you kidding me? <laughs> I I hate the apocalypse. <laughs> Stupid. Filling out forms in triplicate. <laughs> really, guys? We can't just scan can't this. Fast thing? track this with carbon paper. You don't really? Have NFC we have with carbon my phone? paper. Yeah. Okay. So yes. Yeah, so <laughs> they take her to the back, and Nurse Ratchet is going to give her her <laughs> mark of the beast. Right. Yep. <laughs> Scratch it. It like, what look like, like she's so like cartoonishly evil about it. Absolutely. Yeah. It was either we're either gonna insert a chip or insert something else. That's what the <laughs> costume told me. I don't know. But yeah. Yeah. She might as well have the German accent too. And right. like, yeah. I am ready for you. And she's like, all right, you're talking super evil. And there's like, you're talking super evil. What? No. And then Roxy's like, all right, well. I'm leaving. I'm the fuck out of here. And this will not be the last time in this film that one of our heroes is going to escape from the bad guys by being like, I don't want to be in here anymore. And then running away. Yeah. Right. And they're like, <laughs> OK, you know what? Uh, we plan for this. And they did, though, because she she runs out of the little area where all the chip shots are happening. And one guy is just standing there. Clearly, this was his job. Yep. He was just like, we have a runner. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so like, Zern Global has... Student advocates everywhere, <laughs> yeah. history professors everywhere, and also a we have a runner guy. Well, but not dedicated. a very effective one, right? Because no, like, despite having a dedicated guy who just wears an earpiece and looks menacingly at the runner, they don't catch her. Nope. No. Nope. <laughs> this guy sucks nope. so she, bad. She jog walks to safety. Absolutely. She barely, yeah. she doesn't even run. 
she kind of just briskly walks to her car. Hey, guys, <laughs> do we ever do anything when I say we have a runner? Because I feel like this is my entire job. I want to be involved in something. Do, we never <laughs> respond. I just say it, and then there's this new, new scene. I feel like I... I'm not going to even tell you guys the next time I have a runner. What would be the point? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what would you say I do here? <laughs> All right. So meanwhile, in the future, elsewhile, I guess. Oh, yeah. We're, yeah, we're future. <laughs> yeah. Now. Back yeah. at the grain elevator, they've got a bunch of prisoners that they're going to execute. But first, Commander Backflip that has uh, an evil monologue that he'd like oh, to do. God. You, I, you just feel for those people up there, though, too, because they're just, can you just kill me before your dumb speech? Can you just shoot me beforehand? <laughs> I wanted to hear your dumb fucking speech, too. It's like insult to injury. You know what? I'll be atheist and get shot if you just skip the speech. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm doing the speech. Oh, wait, wait. So we haven't pointed this out yet. This is where they really drill down on the fact that the symbol for the evil bad guy cabal is the calf. That's right. That's subtle. Right. It's real subtle. Yeah. <laughs> And he gives like a business MBA marketing little speech to to his <laughs> guys totally at the does. beginning of this before he does the shooting thing. And he's like, yeah, so Zern Global really wants us to like drill down on the branding when we murder people. <laughs> he does. So let's all just remember that the calf is our symbol. The golden Everybody calf. repeat after me. The calf is our symbol. The calf is our symbol. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, he does the call and response. I forgot That's about so that. Good. Yeah, and then he goes into a l way longer, way too extended call and response to follow it up. And everybody gets confused, too. So he's like, can a man build a city? And they're like, yes, sir. Really? Can a man control his own destiny? Yes, sir. And then he's like, can a man pick up a calf? <laughs> and he's like, what, man? What? what? Did, did you add a new one? You, you lost me on the third one. I don't <laughs> And he gets so mad. He's like, all right, fuck, fuck all you. This speech is done. You ruined my momentum. I was doing a thing before. We Just kill him. I don't know. Oh, God. He starts yelling motivational speaker words to the point where at one point, I shit you not, he yells the fucking Lexus slogan. Right? <laughs> <laughs> And also, too, by the way, I want to point out it took 33 minutes into this movie for a cop to kill a black guy. So say what you want about the future, but this looks like progress to me. <laughs> this mm, looks like progress. They've been just killing white folks up until now. So No, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, right. First black so guy. So far future, yeah. I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's really far into the future. So they kill all the prisoners, right? They shoot all the prisoners after the speech is over. We cut over to 408, and he's just not into this mass murder at all, really. And then we cut back to all the people who have been shot and they just, they, they've all died in such comfortable positions, all leaning oh, yeah. so comfortably <laughs> against one another. They look so great. It's amazing. They look like 4 a.m. at a house party. You know yes. what I mean? Where everybody's yeah. just kind of leaning on <laughs> right. each other and napping and just, you know, yeah, we drank way too much, but I don't care. You're my bro. I'm just going to lay on you for a little while. That's what they yep. look like. Yeah, yeah exactly. Did I die in child's pose? That's yeah. <laughs> All right, so 408 goes in to see Commander Backflip, and he's like, hey, man, do we have to, like, can, do we have to do the evil monologue, shooting all the guys thing all the time? There or? is no mercy in this dojo. <laughs> is there no mercy? It's only 100% does it. Fuck you, 408. <laughs> see up. When I tell you to sweep the leg, you sweep the fucking leg, right? <laughs> Get the fuck out of my office. Yeah, so, you know, he basically, he says, like, you know, okay, yeah, no, no, motherfucker, we kill people when I say to kill people. Now, I know you're having doubts as to whether or not you're on the good guy side or the bad guy side. Knowing that information, I'd like you to handle this interrogation and obtain some highly sensitive information, All right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so fucking stupid. So they send him to, like, because 266, the, the bald guy, is trying to interrogate a prisoner, but he can't get anything. So they send 408 to, like, relieve him, like, to to tag in or whatever. Right? And there's a guard outside of the interrogation room. <laughs> 408 <laughs> walks up to the guard and he's like, hey, so, um, how's the torture going in there? <laughs> he totally does. Status report? And he's like, yeah, pretty good. Pretty it's good. all right. Not bad. Medium. Yeah. Medium torture. <laughs> <laughs> so he goes in and he's like, and this is so fucking stupid because he's been reading the book, right? The the journal that he got earlier in the movie. So he knows that Lee Richardson is involved somehow with Zern Global. So he goes in and he says, I already interrogated this prisoner. She told me Lee Richardson is their leader. Oh, you already interrogated her? What? 
why wouldn't you like put that on the spreadsheet? Because yeah. uh, you know. <laughs> we're, 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 like, we're interrogating no. people yeah, and we then just, we kill them. Yeah. It's really <laughs> important that you put on the spreadsheet, man. <laughs> fuck am I doing in here yeah. like an asshole? And then we, we communicate to share the information that we get so we can go find more Christians to either convert or kill them. I don't know if you understand the process here, Gerald. What's going on? Listen, I am a co-manager. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, he's like, oh, okay, well, now I now I look like an asshole. So he storms off. And he turns to him and he's like, well, uh, finish her off then, right? <laughs> he's like looking at her too, like, finish her off is she that close to coming she looks like i mean she looks like she needs a minute still i don't know i don't know if i'm gonna finish her off i'll give it hell but you know all right so now we're, we're back in the modern day roxy is pulling up to her apartment and damn it if there isn't a mysterious van following her around now that she wouldn't get her chip right <laughs> yeah and we have that long thing where she like looks at the van looks back in her house looks at the van that's a scary looking van do they know I'm a main character? <laughs> nah, no, 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 it's probably not. It's probably not. <laughs> and I have to point this out because uh, I put a, a screen grab of it on my Facebook page. Keys jingle is literally the subtitle at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was so happy. <laughs> yeah, so she's looking at the van. She's like, are those the bad guys? And then she notices that it says Zern Global on the side of it. She's like, yep, oh, yeah. the bad guys. Yep. Bad guys. <laughs> oh, you know what? My faucet was leaking. That makes sense. Those They're probably evil just... plumbers. They're following me everywhere, wherever I go. <laughs> Crazy. It's like Wario's in the van or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, he looks like an evil version of the plan. Oh, that's right. Yeah. All, right. So, <laughs> all right. So now Roxy goes to see Brian. Who the fuck is Brian, you might be asking? Why, did Cecil, <laughs> Noah, and Heath all neglect to mention this character named Brian, whom we've been introduced to up to this point? No! Nope. Right, like, he was, like, at the very opening when we first met her and she was having the flashback, we saw him, like, look stalkerly at her at the funeral, but they never tell us who the fuck this guy is. Just a quick scene that's, like, seconds before, Brian is here. Okay, yes. and we're back. Right, yeah. So so Brian is some guy she knows so who she's now going to see, right? Yeah, he's a clean-shaven Edward Snowden. I had him down <laughs> Actually, That's yes, what he looks he like. <laughs> That's what he looks like to me. But she tells him that she didn't get her mark of the beast. He's all freaked out. Then she wants to know if he knows where Professor Dietrich lives. What the fuck kind of question? Who knows where their professors live? Why would he know that? I mean, I know he's Edward Snowden, so he probably can just like hack into something and well, figure yeah. it out. But seriously, like who knows that shit? You're a creepy stalker. Oh, hey, you're the creepy stalker. Do you know where the professor lives? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I feel like this is personal attack on me. I definitely yeah. knew where the professor lives because I like hung out at their house and you know, we'd have like uh, we get philosophy dinner and smoke pot. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. Now, All right. <laughs> You were a creepy stalker in college, Heath. That's awesome. That is good no, to know. Not, so, it's not, <laughs> I would say the professor was, if anything. It's fine. It's mutual. You still know where they live? So, yeah, but security shows up. Zern Global security shows up, and she's got to run out the window. She's got to bail. Yeah, but the cops, though, knock before they break in, and they didn't shoot. So, again, progress here. We're oh, looking yeah. at some progress right. moving good forward, stuff. for sure. Yeah. And this is years before the future, yeah, so it's coming years quick. Years before. Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> All right, but so so she jogs over to Professor Dietrich's house. Good thing he lived nearby. We've got a runner. <laughs> we Just do. a guy outside the door. <laughs> well, now I'm out front. God Guys, damn I'm it. just in the woods. Can I just help? To, I can chase her. I see her right here. Well, all right. Just stay here and announce more runners. Who's there? It's right, fine. 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 Fucking hate this job. All right, so she gets to his house, though, and he's left a clue. He wrote a clue into that journal he gave her about where he would have hidden a secret SD card that had a video on it. Jesus fucking Christ. They know you can put those on websites, right? <laughs> <laughs> or you could just hand her the fucking right. SD card when you handed her the MacGuffin earlier to get her to the this yeah. MacGuffin. They yeah. did yeah. so many trails of MacGuffins in this. It's so dumb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
She does figure it out, though. She goes to the right place. Like, she shows up, and she's really good at escape rooms, so she reads the <laughs> right, yeah. little, little <laughs> comments. She turns to the, oh, it's something about a light, and then so she fiddles with the light, and that's how she finds it, is because she's, like, super smart or something. Or Right, well, yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. It's just like the Da Vinci Code. Yeah, uh, <laughs> right. So she's got an SD card and she puts it in her phone. I'm honestly impressed the movie didn't have like a five and a quarter floppy disk and her just like <laughs> an awesome smash it into the side of her phone disk oh, drive she, that she had. She's yeah. got a CD. She's yeah, exactly. Hold so. on, hold on. I'm clicking on the server of my phone disk. <laughs> do you guys remember? Do you guys remember that movie Strange Days where they had the the there's a specific type of media from back in the day. God, what the fuck oh. is that thing called? Oh, Betamax. I, <laughs> <laughs> She's stuffing a Betamax into her phone. Ah, <laughs> oh, this is VHS. Come uh, on, damn it. It. I know. All right, I'm not going to solve the global <laughs> conspiracy. Let's just end the movie. She's just holding the tape up to the light, like, "Do yeah. this? Like, Look at this? What do I do with this?" <laughs> But yeah, but so she puts this SD card into her phone so she can watch the video on it is how that works. <laughs> and it's the dumbest fucking video. <laughs> it's, it's this professor just explaining things that are obviously true as if a conspiracy theory. Yeah. He's like, did you know that cell phones have a GPS? And she's just like, yeah, I yeah. do. How? Yep. What? Yeah. <laughs> I use Google Maps. Yeah. That's how I got to your house. Anyway. And then and then he says, did you know there's a, a chip in every phone? You can't remove it. Yeah, you can. You definitely yeah, can remove any did. physical yeah. thing from you a phone. You can remove all of the things from your phone. <laughs> all the non-metaphysical things, you can pretty sure, you know, yeah. take a screwdriver or whatever, get it out you of can. there. But what good is a cell phone if it, like they they present this as it's as if it's some like super sinister thing that the cell phone company doesn't want you to know about, but like what good is a cell phone if it doesn't know where it is? <laughs> Right. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about, guys? That's just a radio. Like <laughs> you're listening to the radio at that point is like you don't even Wow. So yeah, so but but he's like he's breaking open his phone and telling her all about what all of the crazy symbols mean on the chips and they're the devil and all of this shit. This is the good guy. This is like the wise Gandalf of this film. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He also pops open his phone and he's like, see, it has a, a logo on the inside with evil demon horns. They hid it on the inside of the phone so nobody foils their plot. I've now yeah. foiled it. Now, you know, <laughs> yeah, go and figure right. out the movie. Oh, and we should point out. So she's sitting on this guy's back porch watching this. Meanwhile, we've got a runner guy is walking in the front door like, ooh, I'm going to find her now. Right. Yep. At one point, don't does, don't they say something like, he's like, if they turn off your chip, right? <laughs> he's talking about turning off the chip. And he says, if they turn it off, you can't eat, you can't drive, and you can't sleep? You can't sleep. What? What the what? Yeah, right. So uh, if they turn <laughs> off your chip, they like mow the lawn next to your house at 3 a.m. for the rest of your life. They right. give you a baby. They're just like, oh, we turn the chip off. <laughs> give him a baby. Give him a look. Give him a newborn. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, they explain the other two. He's like, yeah, you won't be able to start your car without your chip, and you won't be able to make any purchases without it. But then. Yeah, that makes sense. But sleeping? I don't get that like, what, one. I feel they, like they, they, they hold your Ambien prescription at the pharmacist, <laughs> or what has happened? I don't get that at all. I didn't even understand that. Who the hell knows? But yeah, but she realizes she can't use a phone anymore. So she leaves the phone and runs off. Bad guy, you know, they got a runner. We've got a runner guy shows up at the back porch just a minute too late. And he only finds the phone with the video running. Ha ha. Foil. Yeah, I mean, runs off is very generous. Noah, I think she walked seven steps and badly hid behind a tree. <laughs> yeah. That's, I think, what happened. <laughs> He's not yeah. going to see. He's not going to know I'm here. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking to myself. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we cut back to the future. And now 266 is taking a team out looking for Lee Richardson, that guy from the journal that 408 pretended some prisoner told him about keep up yeah <laughs> and we're, we're listening to roxy as the vo of the future here? yes yeah exactly uh-huh and okay so 408 is reading the journal that is partially hers now that she wrote some stuff in too right 
And that's what's happening. Okay. Yeah, exactly. And he's such a fucking, again, this is your secret journal. He's reading it in the armored car, like hoping no one looks over there. Right? Because yeah. 266 is like, what are you reading? And he's like, humming, 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 you know, again. <laughs> It totally gets gone. Let's so share this with the class if it's so important. <laughs> <laughs> Did you bring a journal for everybody to jerk off to? No. Uh, so. Why are these pages stuck together? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like Jeremiah. So, but luckily, before he has to come up with an excuse for why he'd be reading that journal, he's saved by the bell, which is, of course, a sniper taking out their driver. In their armored car. In their armored car. <laughs> Noah, is that where they, they took the driver uh, out through the Christian window? Christian sniper yeah. taking out the driver of the armored car using like a sawed-off shotgun that they shot. <laughs> yes. From so 10,000 yards. The sniper yeah, with the shotgun, shot. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. So, like, and to give you an idea how little they're trying, right? They shoot through the armored car. Then the 266... Tells all these guys, he's like, all units fall back. They're the only unit. It's just that they only had the one armored car. So. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, and what and what you should do when you're getting when you're under sniper fire is get out of your vehicle. Your out of your armored, armored car. <laughs> yes. That's what you should do. Make sure to do that. Yeah. And he says all units fall back, but they all move forward. <laughs> they don't have any. It's not like they have prepared defenses somewhere yeah. to fall back. Yeah. Or something. Uh, that's awesome. So He's good. just saying army words. Yeah. <laughs> Bravo, Echo. You're just saying no, that's not you're not even saying anything. Not anything. B? But yeah, so apparently they were driving to a prison where they believed that Lee Richardson was, and now the, the rebels have attacked them outside of that prison where Lee Richardson is, apparently. I think the rebels like had taken over that prison. It took me a while to understand what was happening here, but is that it? I think the rebels took over the prison, but Lee's still in a cell, which is weird. I don't know. We'll get to it, but it's just weird. It's a weird, yeah. <laughs> so they took over a prison, freed all the prisoners and just stayed there. Then they hung out. <laughs> no shit hung out and for then they later. Assigned rooms. They just, they're like, no man, Which we got a else? sixer. We're going to throw on some stuff on the Barbie. We're going to hang out. I don't know what you guys are doing. I just want to come join us or whatever. <laughs> so hey, there's some old toilet wine still yeah. going from before. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. Roll with this. That's good. A sweet place. Let's make some ramen noodles from the commissary. That sounds good. <laughs> so they're in the they're in this firefight with the with the sniper. Meanwhile, another kid runs and says, Hey guys, the, the alliance is there. And everybody's just sitting around like, you know, I was wondering what all that gunfire was about. That's it. We're in that gunfight, are guys? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So they decide to like join, I guess. Yeah, they do. They do a moment though where they do this sort of like really dramatic pause where the leader says, "Well, let's give him a," and then he loads his gun. Warm welcome. Yeah, that's how you act when someone's attacking your compound. <laughs> yes, you, you pause your <laughs> for dramatic effect while that's going on. You Sorry, know? boss. It's just not, not clear. A lot of people are doing inflections weird. Did you say warm welcome? <laughs> I said like sarcastic, <laughs> yeah, or like warm Let's welcome. Give, yeah, we shoot him. A warm <laughs> welcome. That's what I said. I don't know. Okay, now I feel like I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so so two six six is bringing all the bad guys into the prison. Four oh eight already has Lee Richardson, and then there's like a punchy fight where some guys are trying to save Lee Richardson, and there's a shooty fight where some people are trying to shoot two six six. And like right when you're thinking like, oh, wow, this might have an, a legitimate action beat in it. The Lee Richardson character says, hey, everyone, calm down, calm down. We can't <laughs> yeah. afford this. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> we, we only have this grain silo paintball range for like 10 more minutes. Uh, that's a cut. Also, every single hitting sound effect in that punch fight was exactly yes! the same. Every yes! single one. There's five it Might as well hits. be the Wilhelm scream yeah, every time exactly. there's a punch. Yeah. <laughs> it is exactly that, Heath. It is exactly that. Every single one is distinct and sounds exactly like the previous yes! one. And there's five punches in a row, all from different angles. It's amazing. 
just pan over. There's a guy slamming a piece of ham into yeah, the floor. No, I'm just tenderizing. <laughs> two meat slappers. Uh, you, just... said, you said give him a warm welcome? Yeah. I was making <laughs> ham. I was just warming it up. Yeah. But now I see we're in a gunfight. Can so. you chill that gaffer out with those pork chops? That doesn't sound good when it does that. It just doesn't. Yeah. So, yeah. So, Lee Richardson gives himself up, right? Yeah. And he also, he adds like, okay, I'm going to go with them. By the way, everybody on the Christian team, I left my Bible in my cell, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and well, the, the bad guys are like, okay, hey, boss, should we like go get his Bible? That sounded like super significant. <laughs> no, we're we just knew, leaving. We okay. Oh, yeah, no, sorry, okay. 10 more minutes right. with the range. Right. Hey, yep. more range. Nope. We, we, gotta go. we gotta go. <laughs> Didn't the boss say we need more recruits? No, let's just go. Let's just go. Let's yeah, just get right, them. right. Just, oh, we, we, did, yeah. we did just find a whole bunch of... A whole bunch of the Christian. No, okay, all right, said, we're leaving now. Leaving. All right, he's taking this me, ham. So yeah. <laughs> so, all right. So now we get this great moment, right? So we we go go back to like modern day or whatever, and we have Roxy. She's about to call Lee Richardson and and hook up with him and move that part of the story along. But they have to show us that she's like writing in this journal so that like we know how the guy. <laughs> yeah. So she's. Yep. We see her walking down a sidewalk. At night, in the dark, writing in her journal as she walks with a pencil. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. And they actually show us what she writes for yes, a second. Yes, right. Yeah. Right. And in her two sentences per page style. It's the most amazing <laughs> dumb. Like, she's supposed to be like the detective piecing together the global conspiracy. She's writing down in pencil in the dark, walking around. <laughs> Mark of the Beast. Big space. Yep. Different new thought. RFID dash control people. <laughs> <laughs> the inflections people right in there. want it. Yeah. yeah. Do that. Yes. And that's it. That's the whole detective work. She that's, does here. And that takes an entire page. Now, keep in mind that in the future, our character, our 408, is reading that and getting the story that we're watching in the movie <laughs> somehow. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but yeah. So she writes that down. She st she stops at Earth's last fucking payphone, apparently, right? <laughs> and she calls Lee Richardson. She's like, "Hey, you were telling me earlier about like some seminar that Zern Global was putting on." <laughs> what <the> fucking what? <laughs> and he literally responds like, "Yeah, hey, um, is this your real number? Because." Verizon's telling me it's a payphone. <laughs> what? Do you own a payphone? I, <laughs> I own a payphone. That is yeah. so move on? retro. I love it. So yeah, so he picks her up to take her to the big Antichrist rally. She sure is impressed with his Pontiac. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, no one in the world has a more appropriate car than a. It's like a four cylinder Trans Am with a timing problem. That is his car. <laughs> When you hear it come up, you can hear it's going, it's like chugging weird. It's like, duck, 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 duck. and you're like, There's, that car's clearly broken. Something's wrong with your car. He's driving the payphone of cars. He, is, he absolutely is. And he's so goddamn proud of it. Oh, he yeah. rolls up and he's like, check out my 82 sports car. I don't know. <laughs> well, it's sporty though. Brum, 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 brum. And she's like, yeah, sure. You don't have cool, to go. Brum, brum. It's doing that on its own. <laughs> That's the noise it makes. I made just now. Brum, 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 brum. <laughs> yep. Yep. Got it. Well, what's amazing too is that the actress says like, oh, this is a very nice car that you have, which means that this dude was like, hey, can you put in some lines about how awesome my car is? <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like she would be impressed, wouldn't she, when she got in the car with the Trans Am? Like, yeah, she sure would, man. Or when they rented the armored truck, they were also like, do you have an 82 Trans Am that's mostly broken? <laughs> that kind of goes... Blah, 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 blah. That has a wet uh, smoker's cough. That'd be great. <laughs> Oh, then there's this amazing moment where they're they're driving to the seminar, right? And uh, he looks down and he sees that she's wearing a ring, and he goes, "So, where is do you have? Where is your husband?" And I'm like, "Oh my God, we're gonna watch Heath flirt." <laughs> okay, <laughs> I think yeah. you kind of nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> First, you know, he argues with her and wins. So, you know, point him. Yeah, right. He's like, that's Wait, clearly that's an engagement ring. Yeah. And she's like, no, it's not. And he's like, yes, it fucking is. I know what an engagement ring looks like. That's obviously an engagement ring. And she's like, nope. And he's like, you're a liar. I win. <laughs> yep, yep. See, he does get the first point. 
She's yeah. like, no, no, I'm single, I promise. And he's like, oh, okay, well, I'm single too. Yeah. Wink. wink. <laughs> I said wink out loud. Did you hear me say wink? I, I'm yeah, going to die it. alone. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I have a bow tie and an 82 Trans Am, so I'm kind of a big deal. <laughs> I think I'm going to be, I think I'm going to be all right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm assistant to the regional student advocate for Zen Global <laughs> Northeast. Pretty big deal. Pretty big deal. So yeah, so he brings her in. He, he brings her in and he's like, hey, I reserved really awesome seats for us. And by us, I mean you, because I'm the opening act and I got here three <laughs> seconds before it started. That's right. <laughs> yeah. He did. He runs right off the stage at yeah. that moment. Yeah. As an entertainer, I can say, fuck you, Jesus Christ, everyone's been having a heart attack back there, you asshole. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> what the fuck is well, he runs up on stage and he comes out and he's just like, keep it going for the, the, the henchman staring at you from the back of the stage. Keep it going for the henchman. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Chip Fest. Who's drinking tonight? All right. Nobody. <laughs> okay. Great. Uh, let's meet. Mr. Zern. And yeah. he literally says Mr. Zern. Like it yeah. seems like the guy would have a first fucking name, no? Right. Yeah. Maybe some letters after his name. Yeah. But I also, by the way, just want to point out the stage looks like an altar. That's yes. got the two banners on the side yep. with a podium in the center that is clearly like got like Egyptian hieroglyphs on the front of it or whatever. <laughs> I don't even know. There's some weird symbol, but it's a hundred percent an altar. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, they they, they were yeah. not subtle with yeah, this. Not subtle. And a, not subtle. And a literal henchman. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Literal on stage, henchman. just yeah. menace, menace, menace. Yeah. menace. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hench, hench, hench. Also, when he when he introduces him, he says he says he's a something of industry, and then he's like, end of general business is what he no. said. At <laughs> yeah. One point. What? He screams. He, he says he's he's a leader in technology and marketing and general business. <laughs> yeah. He's also a. Master of business administration, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, we don't. Nobody has any idea no. what that fucking means. No. It's nope. a nonsense degree. No. It means nothing. It's a bunch of buzzword Sorry. bullshit. You don't even learn yeah. math. Fuck off. Yeah. We do know about branding these horns, though. I will say oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That. We understand. Absolutely. Yeah. So he's like, yeah. So now I'm introducing a man who needs no introduction, which is good because we really didn't write out a backstory for him or anything. <laughs> Mr. Sir, totally not the Antichrist. And I was in for two surprises here. Number one, the Antichrist did not have a European accent, right? So right, yeah. I felt like I owed yeah. somebody 50 bucks. And secondly, more importantly, oh, how delightful, it's Eric Roberts. Eric motherfucking Roberts is here. <laughs> so exciting. He's so good in... Um... <laughs> He's in... I, I fucking love his movies. Like, what, God, is, what did you guys like him in? He crushed it in that one thing. He's oh, famous. Challenge yeah. to the listeners. Name something other than The Dark Knight that Eric Roberts is in that isn't this Rumors of Wars. <laughs> yeah. Or Entourage as himself. That doesn't count either. Dies in Justified. He's a DEA agent for one <laughs> okay. episode of his kill. So I know that for sure. No yeah, fair. Yeah. You had a head start. Wow. I did, I did, yeah. <laughs> this is where he tells his cow this is where he tells his cow story though. This is the cow story. <laughs> so yep. silly. Yeah, he, this is this is Cecil's best worst where he tells that bullshit story about how if you pick up a cow every day from the day it's born, you'd be able to pick up a full grown cow, which obviously wouldn't <laughs> work. <What the> fuck? <laughs> also, Heath, Heath, what do you call that exercise? The exercise of picking up a, a cow that yeah. weighs a little bit more every day? Yeah. Oh, come on. I got to get this. I got to get this. I'm so mad because I can't come up with a good answer. I know you have a fucking amazing point waiting. Cow listhenics. Calf raises, my friend. Calf raises. <laughs> okay. I actually got an answer by the end of it, but yeah. Okay. Just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cow listhenics is actually really good. So. <laughs> Yeah, so he's uh, he's telling this story, which again has nothing to do with anything. Like, there's a calf, right? That explains the horns, sort of. It ties into that. But like, you could tell me this entire movie had been sort of written around this piece of video, and I would totally believe you, right? Yeah, like what what does the chip have to do with CrossFit? I don't get it. I don't understand. No idea. Like why, like suddenly you can like your P, you can PR your deadlifts better if you have a chip. <laughs> I don't understand what's happening. 
And and his point is is that he didn't lift the cow every day, so darn right. it, he didn't stick with it. He failed. So, you lost. Wh- who? <laughs> you fucking lost. You didn't do it. I think they heard that story about, you know, like the frog in the pot of hot water from Inconvenient Truth that Al Gore tells the old story about that and just completely misunderstood it and was like, no, and the frog never dies. <laughs> the frog you becomes can, it turns into plasma <laughs> and the frog becomes invisible. It's a super <laughs> frog. Yeah. So <laughs> and maybe gay. I saw it on a podcast. Absolutely. So, yeah. So he throws out some buzzwords. And then after the show is over, we have Roxy, who is hiding from CERN Global, sitting in an empty theater all by her fucking self, waiting for the opening act of CERN Global to show back up to pick her up. So fucking stupid. So so eventually, Lee shows up and he's like, hey, Roxy, I want to take you and introduce you to Mr. CERN. Cool. Does he have a name besides no, Mr. Mr. Sir. It's Mr. Oh, it's Mr. Okay. That's still, yeah. European or something. <laughs> but she should have known there was something wrong because they didn't have two scenes with Eric Roberts. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> we could so, afford that. So she gets to the back and they kidnap her and drag her into the interrogation room. In the theater <laughs> that they built right. in the back of this theater. <laughs> they go they go back there and they're like, hey, can we rearrange the green room to make it more ominous? Just for a minute. I don't need it for a long time. Ominous. I just want to make I it. I mean, we can rearrange yeah. it. You know, can you just. Why just, ominous? Just turn down, just turn the lights down a little. I just want to scare okay. that chick. That's Point all. them all that's towards all. that Sorry, chair. did you say scare a woman? <laughs> yeah, I want to scare a woman is what I want to do. I want to frighten a woman. Huh. Um, That's not weird. Is it? Is that weird? Okay, this is new. <laughs> okay. Hey, there's a runner guy. Do you think? All right. <laughs> yeah. So they grab her and they drag her into the interrogation room, and she turns to there's a runner guy, and she says, "Where's Professor Dietrich?" And he turns her phone that has the video playing towards her, still playing. And it's st- yes, <laughs> right. It's so still going. going. Did he just still have going. it on a loop? And she's like, you know what? She's going to ask. She's totally going to ask where he is. And I'm going to turn. And it's, I'm going to be like, oh, he's right here in my pocket. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I wanted her to not ask the question for a while. And he's just like, hey, so maybe you're curious about what happened to. Hold on. Is there a voice this. coming from your ass? Yeah. yeah, exactly. There's like a muffled sound coming from his chest pocket. And it's like, hold on. Burp, 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 Shut up. Shut up. Burp, Shut up. Don't ask yet. I'm going to. Wind it just wait, it's playing an ad. It's you, on you an ad. You're curious. Yeah. <laughs> skip. I can no, skip, skip it in 15 sec- well, oh, eight seconds. Well, eight seconds now. Eight seconds. God too damn fat. it. It won't let you. You can't stop during this. It keeps going either Shit. way. So- <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I'm now I'm installing uh, a new software for the phone. <laughs> This is good. I'm on mobile data. This is going to cost me fucking money. Ah, I'm going over my thing. Uh, yeah, so so they grab her and then they and they chip her, right? They they insert the chip into her hand and they're like, "Bwa ha ha. We were the ones that were doing the bombings the whole time." She's like, "Why would you tell me that? It makes no sense." And he's like, "And it never will, but we're about to let you go, too." Really? She's like, "That also makes no sense." He's like, "Fuck it. We just we like it doesn't we don't have a movie, really, if we have you. I, didn't really so. I can just leave. You're saying I can just leave? Yeah. So she just leaves. Are you going to say we have a runner and then do nothing? <laughs> for real? Just for old time's sake? Yes. Yes, for old time's yeah, sake. Yeah, I learned this but... in college. Am I being detained right now? <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. She knew to ask. Ah, ah, she spells her name in lowercase letters, too. We've got nothing. Um, all right. No, you're being detained. Well, I'll tell you what, all this movie scenes kind of bleed together and I have to put an act break somewhere. So there, damn it. But first, let me get back to the hard sell. Will the main characters find themselves unable to affect the outcome of events as they are constrained by biblical prophecy? Will they all know this but still try to affect the outcome anyway? Why the hell do these Christian filmmakers not realize that before they start making the goddamn movies? Find out the answers to questions and more when we return for the pretty sure it's going to get a sequel conclusion of Rumors of Wars. All right, gentlemen. Well, as I told you on the phone, uh, my client would be delighted to take the role as he is Eric Roberts and he never turned down anything ever. 
No? Hmm. no it, it, it isn't talent that netted him the 579 IMDB entries and counting. I mean, come on. Wow. So if you've got a contract drawn up, I literally have a rubber stamp right here. His signature on it. I could just Well, you know. uh, we thought we'd discuss payment first. Mm-hmm. I thought we worked all that out on the phone. Uh, not exactly. To be honest, we just misled you about money to get you here. Wow, that is immoral. That's immoral. Uh, well, we're mm-hmm. Christians, so we don't know what you mean by that. Okay, that's fair, and that, that tracks for sure. Okay, so here's what we'd be willing to pay. Um, we you, were can, thinking, you can just say an amount, um, really. Just slide a piece of paper, you know, slide a piece of paper across. You know, that sort of thing. Okay. Uh, well, that right there is the most we can offer. There is nothing written on this. No. No, correct. But it is worth a buy one, get one free at any Firehouse sub-franchise in the entire, well, in the entire Northeast region. We, we, we know Firehouse. your your client loves the Northeast region. Uh, guys, Eric Roberts is easy, but he's he's not... This easy. You sure? Um, yeah, not, not at all, actually. Uh, how much movie do you need him for? Uh, like eight minutes. Eight seconds, you said? Four minutes. 30 seconds? Three minutes? 84 seconds. But it's just footage of whatever he was already talking about when we turned on the camera. You know what? I can write around that. I can do that. Deal. Yeah, absolutely. That'll fit. Nice. Nice. Okay. So he so he's never turned down anything. He has so many Nigerian boyfriends. So many. Wow. He was in Entourage. <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. I'm going to be honest with you guys. If you had stopped this flick five minutes in and you'd said, hey, Noah, do you think there's going to be a VO definition of false flag operation at some point in the movie? <laughs> I would have said... Just dictionary. <laughs> Find, it literally happens. I would have nailed 100%. that. Yeah, no, that's what we're going to open up on Act 3 with uh, Roxy explaining false flag operation as the news tells us about more devastating explosions. Yeah, so to be clear, the, the VO is happening right now. So it, this is Roxy's voice, so it's in her journal, what yeah. we're hearing. Mm-hmm. That means her journal included her dictionary definition of false yeah. flag. Yep, mm-hmm. <laughs> And also her transcribing a news report from television. <laughs> you know what? The news was on while I was trying to write that definition. I did not mean to write that last bit. <laughs> <laughs> and weekend weather after the break. End of journal entry. <laughs> Does your journal entry have a car commercial in it? Yeah. That's weird. <laughs> All right, so yeah, so but we but yeah, we fade out on that voiceover because of course that's 408 reading the journal and he comes across this Bible passage, this mysterious Bible passage, Isaiah 9:6. <laughs> right, which apparently says the government is going to try to kill Jesus with the MMR vaccine or something <laughs> like that. Yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, it, it, he says it, though, as Isaiah 96 first. He's like, Isaiah 96. Yeah, uh-huh. And that guy played for the Pistons, so that's not the right thing. That's a different guy. And he was every bit as good as Michael Jordan. He would be happy to tell you that. <laughs> so, yeah. So, and, and by the way, this is so fucking stupid because apparently we're supposed to believe that this character, that 408, you know, grew up in a world where he doesn't know what a Bible is and doesn't recognize Isaiah 9, 6 as having any meaning. But like when they find Lee Richardson, he's not old. Yeah, no, he's like, he's just dirty. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. He's dirty. Like he's not a, yeah, he's smudgy, <laughs> but he's not like older at all. He's the same no. Lee Richardson. We've exactly. known from the whole, it's maybe a little, little extra beard growth. Maybe he could manscape a little better. Yeah. Awful so- at checkout. <laughs> Or whatever. Well done. Future well was done. a few days later in Detroit. That's, yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. So, all right. So now 408 has to interrogate Lee Richardson, right? 266 has been trying, but he can't get anything out of him, no matter how hard he punches. <laughs> right? So they're like, 408's like, I can do it, boss. I have a very specific set of skills. <laughs> yeah. His skills are, I can slam him up the wall. And everyone's like, man, I didn't think of that. Oh, oh slam him against Dude, the wall. He's a fucking innovator, this guy over here. <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> 
<laughs> so smart. You do have a wall. Yeah. That's it was, was right there the whole time. Him so, like, the whole day. Know, yeah. Seems so obvious now that he's done it. Yeah. So he demands to know what Isaiah nine six is, right? <laughs> he he says, Who is Isaiah ninety six? Like some kind of secret agent named Isaiah ninety six. Yeah. He's and Lee Richardson is like, Wow, you're stupid. It's <laughs> <laughs> Isaiah nine six from the Bible. You heard of the you heard of the Bible? No. Oh, okay. All right. Weird. And then he, like he pulls out the journal and he goes like, "Are you part of this MacGuffin or what? Damn it! Your phone number's in it." <laughs> and he's like, "Yeah, no, I recognize that journal." And he's like, "That's good enough for me." So he turns around and he shoots. A commander backflip and 266 and hauls ass with Lee Richardson. He's going to break him out because he's Christian now, I guess. Why didn't he ask Lee Richardson? Are you Lee Richardson? Five, 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 one, two, one, two, four, six, four, four. <laughs> right, yeah, <exactly. laughs> so they run off. And so I guess he kills commander backflip. He shoots 266 right, in the head, but not in a bad way, not in a, like a permanent way. Yeah, he shoots him. He shoots him. It clearly shoots him in the chest, but the guy looks up. Two six six looks up, and he's just got a hand wound. Oh, is that? But oh, he looks like he totally shoots. Okay, he totally shoots him in the hand. But at a certain point, when they when they pan to two six six on the ground scowling, he's got a hand wound. I guess he's holding his arm. Oh, he caught the bullet. Is what it is. He I caught, bet. must yeah. have caught it really quickly. Yeah. <laughs> That's what happens so, when you're a Shaolin monk or whatever. So they run off, and now 408 has to pull out his tracker. And I love this, right? Because I'm thinking, like, oh, go through the nose, like in Total Recall. No. He pulls out this giant knife, and he's like, all right, I'm going to cut out my tracker right now. That's not a knife. Well, That's like a side sword. Are you kidding me? He pulls this thing out, and he's like, and I'm just thinking to myself, I'm like, choke up on that motherfucker. Like, it's like a, it's a 25 inch blade he Dude, pulls out. Is that the Damascus sword from Soul Calibur? <laughs> it's a, exactly. <laughs> Just use like a safety pin, man. Like yeah. one, little, one, I have a safety pin right here. It's right on the surface. It's yeah, a little just, chip. You can just do that. Fucking crocodile Dundee looks at it and goes, No, okay, no, you got it. That's, no, that is that's, it's 100% <laughs> so, a knife. Yeah, no, that's it's big. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, elsewhile, Roxy is. <sighs> Sitting in an empty classroom journaling because they can't think of anything to do with this character at all except for have her writing in this stupid <laughs> fucking journal. Right. And then Brian, remember Brian, the really yeah. important character, Brian? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, who had the backstory? Yeah. Edward Snowden. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. he yeah. walks in and he's like, hey, yeah, I figured you'd be alone in this room. I need to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> So what happened at the thing last night, the big gala? And she explains that <laughs> they they held her down and they chipped her and revealed their evil plot and then just uh, let me go. Which is kind of weird. Pretty stupid. They just, they just <laughs> let you go then, huh? Well, and, and definitely going to win. Just then, fucking Professor Dietrich shows up. And they're like, yeah, he's, he's like, yeah, well, they let me go too. Like, why? He's like, we really, ne we're not going to explain it at all to you. So there's no reason for you to ask. <laughs> like, he like, they apply for half the movie that that dude has been iced. Yes. And then he just shows up out of nowhere. No, I'm good. I'm fine. I just, yeah, no, I was yeah, up I, in Muskegon. I stopped at a Waffle House, <laughs> and I had, mm -hmm. they were smothered. It was good. Their potatoes were good, and I just left. Just smothered. Just, yeah, you I gotta, came here. Yeah. You gotta, it's, it's the I, only it's, one I know, so. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to improvise my order and I couldn't yeah, do yeah. Yeah, cause <laughs> anything else. I'm sorry. Yeah. Anyway, I had the Waffle House shits, but uh, what did I miss? Is there any chip <laughs> stuff? <laughs> any uh, any evil henchmen or anything that I missed? Yeah. Uh, and oh, by the way, so so like Professor Dietrich shows up and he's like, oh, it's all a big plot from the Illuminati. And Brian, meanwhile, is fucking speed reading the Bible, looking for clues. Yes. <laughs> right. And also, by the way, they're they continually like. These guys, these Christians, they unironically want us to know that bad people are puppet masters. <laughs> like, what? Are you serious? Are you? Did you read that book? You didn't read it, did you? You didn't read it. No, you just right. page through it quickly like Edward Snowden's doing right yeah, now. Yeah, right, right. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, why did they let us go? And he's like, oh, they're here. And she's like, really? We're not even going to, we're going to throw the question out and then not answer. That's lazy. That's just fucking... 
crazy. <laughs> the, the movie no ended itself. Yeah. And it's just like moving on. <laughs> right, right, yeah. And it leaves that scene altogether, right? It gets out of that scene twice. It's like, oh, the bad guys are here, and we're going back to the future, apparently. So we cut back to Lee and 408 on the lamb, right? This is where 408 explains how he got the journal, which is so stupid because it's just like, well, I found it on the ground and I picked it up. Right? That's the, that's the whole story. Yeah, and Lee, of course, is like, was there a girl sort of dead and curled up around the <laughs> journal when you found it? <laughs> Just need to, I need closure. I need closure. I'm Lee Richardson, by the way. I don't know if you knew me. Yeah. Important. The Lee Richardson? Uh, so oh, we'll I'm, get to it. I work for Zern Global as a student advocate. Uh, kind of a big deal around here. here. Pretty big famous. deal around here. Yeah. Kind of car do you drive? <laughs> Four cylinder Trans Am with a little cough. <laughs> <laughs> little cough? Yeah. Kind of sounds like this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. You want to fuck? I love to. <laughs> We're out here in the woods. <laughs> Uh, I love too. He's like, you know, he's t- uh, Lee Richardson is explaining all the the Bible codes that that Roxy has put into her journal, and he's like, these are all prophecies. And he's like, what do you mean prophecies? He's like, all of these prophecies have either come true or will come true soon. And I'm like, oh yeah, nailed it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Isaiah apparently wrote down what Jesus was going to look like in a sealed envelope. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out he fucking nailed it a few pages later. He's holding it to his head like Karnak and telling yeah. people what's going on. Uh, yeah, so yeah, no, he, he says it's like, he says it's pretty amazing, actually. Isaiah 9 6 is a pretty solid prediction of what's going to happen later in the book. He's like, that's not, that's foreshadowing, man, not a prediction. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they, uh, it's a fiction. They made it all up. So you can just write whatever you want and say it was true. That's how it works. It also literally says in Isaiah 9, 6 that Jesus is going to be called Counselor. Yep, it does. You ever hear anybody call him Counselor Christ? <laughs> That's something people say? Oh, I'm sure somebody did it just so that they could win that argument at some point. So he's like, yeah, so how did you know the girl who owned this journal? So then we flash back to how he knew the girl who owned the journal. So we, we, we've got the Alliance, right? They're taking over the campus. And Brian, who was leaping through the Bible, he's like, hey, guys, I just figured this out. I know this is going to come as quite a shock to you, but that Zern logo of the devil horns, it turns out that those are devil horns. What? Whoa. You mean like the second beast from Revelation? Just like the second beast from the book of Revelation. That's all in that book? And you made it all the way to the end that quick? Good for yeah, you. Right. Way to go. Man. Good at this. You sure that's not just like Texas Longhorns or something? Yeah. No, no, devil. Definitely the devil. Are you sure it's not just the logo for a faucet company? I mean, come on. <laughs> well, I didn't say. And those aren't mutually exclusive. All right. So, and then what I love about this is that this movie is treating this like it's some huge reveal that we, the viewers, haven't figured out yet. <laughs> Yeah. No, yeah. Right. They're like, yeah. oh my God, guys, the hand, just like the mark of the beast. The yeah. hand. <laughs> right. And Brian explains also that, like, oh no, this is definitely the second beast who makes everyone worship the first beast in Revelation. So the, th- the theory is that Zern Global is going to make everybody worship a fucking kraken that's <laughs> the first beast feels like the kraken would have been on the news by now at least I don't know there's a kraken in one of those reports it's a no nine headed kraken with too many crowns it's uh that's gonna catch the eye the way they explain it too is they say they say well it's either on the right hand or the forehead I'm thinking man if you're an amputee it just sucks in the future because you gotta swipe your head everywhere <laughs> you're just constantly like no did it go off again beep no fuck I got I my head again? Motherfucker. <laughs> Just hold your head up against the pain. I love that every fucking Christian movie, every apocalypse movie has to deal with that problem and none of them ever actually get like, let us watch that process take place. Yeah. But People trying to share music, just headbutting each other. <laughs> like, no, we have NFC, right? <laughs> no, I took this really cool picture. Let me share it with you. <laughs> Bam. God, no, didn't get it. Damn it. Didn't okay. get it. No. You know what? I'm low. Can, do we? Do you have reverse charging? Should we just smash our heads together for a minute? 
Oh, so there's a there's a great moment too, like the, a great little line at the end, right, where they're like, "Oh, he's the second beast that tells everybody to worship the first beast," and then Roxy says, "Well, then who's the beast?" And and the bad guys come in just then and end the scene. But it made me think about it like a <laughs> reboot where Satan shows up and has to be Judith Light's housekeeper, <laughs> <laughs> right? That would be so good. But fallen Angela. So, all right. Uh, so, but now they've been. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ! Is that, Tony Danza still in it though? Like, is he still in it? Oh, well, I, I would think. I mean, what, yeah, he's doing okay. something. Yeah. yeah, Tony Danza was That's doing fair. something. He was busy. He was in that uh, movie with Eric Roberts. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. All right. So, so wait. So, check this bullshit out. Now the Alliance have recaptured Professor Dietrich and Roxy, who they let go two scenes ago for no goddamn reason. Yeah, very much let them go. Yeah, they didn't. Have, sorry, we didn't have holding cells, but now we do. We cleared the green room out from the interrogation yeah. room. <laughs> right. Now you can go right back there. Who figured you were already <laughs> you interrogated? Right in now you yeah. had the yeah. chip. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. But luckily for Roxy, Brian knows the old push the bad guys over and run trick. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Yeah. He does it so sly, too. He's like, oh, uh, thanks. Thanks for keeping the peace, guys. Just uh, curious. Uh, what if I were to shove you and run? <laughs> and it works. <laughs> well, it works for a moment, but, you know, hey. They have a guy for runners. They do. Unfortunately, well, they, they have too many of them at this point. They're like all five oh, you're got right. runner guys are just like looking at each other like you going to do you, you got are you going to get it? Oh, is it is, me? Am I up? Sorry. See, this is I'm why a, we can't be co-managers of we've got a runner. <laughs> we, there needs to be a leadership. In in 3 minutes I take my 15. This one's yours. I'm not doing this. <laughs> Oh, you're on your 15 right now? No, <laughs> three minutes I take my 15. Not yet. Okay. Yeah. Whose 15 is it now? I don't know. I think it's Bill's. Bill? 264. It's 264, Heath, not <laughs> Bill. 264. Uh, yeah, four. Yeah. Okay. All right, so... but We just say Bill. So, but of course, by then, <laughs> they've got a head start. The main It's a Runner guy almost has the drop on him, but just then... Lee shows up with the star of the movie, that sweet ass Trans Am of his. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the fucking, it's like the the Tyrannosaurus in Jurassic Park. No, guys, they'll want to see it come back. They'll want to see it yeah, again. His, at the end. his pewter <laughs> Trans Am saves the day. Yeah, yes. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay, to be clear, he became a good guy here because he accidentally ran over a bad guy, right? I, I That's think what he happened? intentionally ran over the bad guy. Yeah, but yes. I think oh, he became he? a he. He had a change of heart after they forcefully stuck a chip in her, like he'd been doing all day. I guess. I don't <laughs> right? I'm yeah, not sure. Exactly. I'm not sure <laughs> exactly. what happened. And and I will say, you totally could do this move. You could take that guy out with your Trans Am, but then the one headlight would. St Stick upward for the rest of the time you own the fucking thing, and there's nothing you can do about it. I just want to point that out. Do people have a lot of trouble with that? You're like my normal car with headlights just getting fucked up all the time because there's not a cover that closes just, for it. It looked, yeah. it looked cool. It looked it looked pretty fucking cool. All right, so so and then okay, this scene is so weird, right? So, so he's he's like he runs over the. We've got a runner guy. And he's like, get in, get in, guys. And they're like, are you sure you can fit three people in that impractical ass car of yours? He's like, not technically, yes. Technically, they'll fit. So they all drive in it. They get in it. And he takes them to a cemetery. And he goes, well, this is as far as I can take you guys. And I'm like, oh, he's going to kill him. But no. No, that's just no. the line he said when he got to the cemetery. <laughs> they're all like, oh, is this a mur... Oh, you didn't even put that together. Okay, never mind. All right. This yeah. literally is how far you can take this. I think we've made it to the end of the line. No, seriously, this is as far out as the train goes. The <laughs> what? Don't use metaphors. You're going to get confused each yeah. time. <laughs> so, yeah, he takes him to the cemetery. He's like, I can't take you any further than this. This is as far as you go. This will be the end of this film. Don't worry. We're real confident we'll get a sequel. <laughs> so... I take you farther, but I didn't lift you up every day for your whole life. And so I can't, can't carry you anywhere. So, so long. 
Yeah. So, and, oh, and before he leaves, he's like, oh, and by the way, you guys might want to try to take uh, the tracking devices that are inserted into your hands out. Like, yeah, we were gonna, but yeah, okay, yeah, no, thanks. Yeah. Best bet, like, chop off your arm. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe your entire upper Does body. Does any of you have a giant bastard sword of some yeah. sort? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Future Lee wraps up this story while he and 408 are meandering together down a country road. And right then he's like, so, hey, so 408, how did you wind up being a Christian? He's like, yeah, the movie, like, it just just sort of happened off screen, I guess. It was really <laughs> weird. And just then, before he has to actually, like, detail that story, a random good guy shows up and says, hey, you guys happened upon our uh, Christian refugee camp. Yeah, exactly. Good job. But this guy, though, he, he comes out of the bushes and he says, I've been tracking you for over a half a mile, but then I quickly ran ahead of you to hide in these bushes and honestly <laughs> come out of them. So I've been tracking I've been you, in you somehow, but I've been tracking you. So I don't know. Maybe you have an RFID chip on you you didn't think about. I don't know. You know? They're, and they're like, were you just walking around the woods at night randomly? Yeah. <laughs> for how long? How long have you been following us? Because we had a little romantic moment. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Trans Am. Nope. My favorite car too. So he's like, he's like, yeah, let's 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 all go to our Christian hovel. Who are you guys? And and Lee Richardson says, Well, I'm Lee Richardson. And everybody's like, Oh fuck, it's Lee Richardson. Holy <laughs> shit, guys. Bill Brasky. Yeah, yeah. He's Bill Brasky of this. He's John Connor and Bill Brasky <laughs> yes. of this movie. But he's he's yes, he's clearly the norm of Christianity. They never explain why, right? Like, and and I think honestly that the only reason they wrote this into this movie was a way of saying, like, see, some of Christianity's best friends are black, you know. Because otherwise, <laughs> I, like I don't see what purpose it serves. Right, right. I can't figure it out either, but he's but he's basically like he is Norm because as soon as they walk in, as soon as everybody's like Norm, what's yeah. going on? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so he goes in, and, and we have another group of smudgy Christian squatters, right? And four hundred eight is going to be their honored guest. They're going to have a little sermon, right? So we have um, chick that very clearly wants to fuck the shit out of Lee Richardson. Mm. Oh, yeah, and she's yeah. going to give us the sermon. Yeah, yeah. She is sensual. Yeah. <laughs> she's got a kimono on somehow. Everybody else is all smudged up and she's got this like gorgeous thing going on. Yeah. She's got a small basket of fruit. <laughs> Just <laughs> with her basket yeah. of fruit yep. in their <laughs> apocalyptic hideout, which yeah. I thought was weird. That's uh and she gives this speech. Good design decision. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Guys, it's Lee fucking Richardson. Can you believe it? <laughs> Lee fucking Richardson. And everybody's like, Yeah, that's you know. That's the entire script for the last 10 minutes. We got it. We got it. <laughs> and then he's supposed to give a fascinating lecture about the Bible being true to everybody and get them all amped up. But that lecture does not exist. <laughs> right. Yes. So nope. they have to just cut straight to violin music and montage it. And we just yep. see his lips moving. Yep. He's just he's got a Bible in his hand and he's gesticulating. And that's it. That's yep. what you get. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. And then and then he turns to 408. He says, and I'm particularly thankful to my friend 408. Got to admit, no idea why this sworn enemy of our religion who is actively trying to exterminate us helped us and uh, brought me here. I have not no. bothered to ask him before bringing him here to you guys. So, hey, do you want to you want to tell us? Are you uh, you legit? You Christian now or are you uh, 408? Please. Stand up and uh, yeah. explain the movie. <laughs> <laughs> but so, and and because this movie doesn't really have any like revelation to have changed things for him, he's like, but you know, I grew up thinking that religion was evil and that you guys started the wars, which is super duper correct. But then I found this diary <laughs> and it said, nah, on. I was like, wow, I never thought about nah, on before. <laughs> And then I saw a Mel Gibson video. Turns out <laughs> all the wars were actually started by the Jews. So, you know, atheist army, right? Yeah. And so, and then because this movie knows it's been making us fuck around for too long, during the you're one of us, you're a Christian now hug, 408 feels the tracker that they've planted on Lee, and the bad guys are right there. It's really got. 
soft fingertips or something <laughs> to be able to figure. He's like a cancer sniffing dog. He finds that instantly. It's amazing. It's, it's a waterproof band aid for bee stings, right? For kids. That's what that was, right? <laughs> That's what it was. Okay. How did you find so, that? I was, uh, I was felt it. Feeling, I was caressing your back yeah. very thoroughly, <laughs> and I felt it. I found it because I've memorized every curve on your body. <laughs> <laughs> so. I say I really love Trans Ams. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier. <laughs> so. All right, so now it's time for a night chase through the woods. No, it isn't, right? Because yeah. <laughs> no, they didn't no. have that kind of money. No. You know, a lot of shooting. <laughs> yeah, so like seconds after this chase begins, they realize how hard chase scene is to film and they catch 408 and Lee, right? And uh, 266 has to give his monologue about how Christians make great slaves and their women make great prostitutes. And I'm like, oh, have you been reading the Bible? Because it suggests <laughs> that exactly. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Tricky with the prostitutes. You can't pay them because the government knows you spent chip money. on <laughs> So, yeah. So, no, he turns to 408, right? And he put, holds a gun to his head and he's like, hail the calf, which is like, you know, give obeisance to, to Zern Global or whatever. He's like, no, I am Spartacus. And the guy's like, I don't get the reference. Like, right. We don't have DVD players in this yeah. future. I'm Christian now, though. Feels like you're going to shoot me either way. So, <laughs> yeah, <know. laughs> right, right. No, I'm not going to hail the calf. Can you pick up a calf? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now Here's everybody has to do, do the call and response. God yeah. damn it! Yeah, I have a, I have a strategy. Let me tell you really quick. <laughs> <laughs> Just give me the lifetime of a calf, and I am going to kick your ass. <laughs> So, but then, yes, a gunshot rings out, but wouldn't you know it? It was somebody shooting 266 from behind. I'm like, I wrote in my notes, like, please turn around and see Jesus armed to the teeth. Please turn around and see Jesus armed to the teeth. <laughs> no, it's who the fuck even knows? An under five screams, it's the rebels, right? Because that way we have some fucking clue what just happened. But yeah, yeah right, right. The rebels just came and saved them at the last second. Yeah, it's La Resistance from, uh, from that jail, it's the guys. Yeah. The guys who's it's like, bring him. Uh, we'll give him a warm welcome. That yeah. Oh, this is the oh, because he paused so long. Yeah. This is when they finally figured out this what is, he yeah. meant. I got it. Okay. So yeah, so the rebels all run at the the evil atheist army guys, and they they clearly didn't script this part. They definitely let all those under fives improvise the chase yelling yeah. part, and it went so goddamn badly. Just so like 20 guys being like gun shooting you. Bang, bang guns. Pew, pew. I chase you now. I chase you. You chase by me. Passive voice. Freedom. And there's some people in the background that don't actually know if the camera's running or not. So they're kind of like, should I keep moving or no? Do I, do I stop? Or do yes. I, like, am I, should I come back to the camera and we'll try it again? Second take. What's going on? <laughs> Communicate. Use that little microphone. Still rolling. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, so it's the Christians win the everyone just stands across from each other and shoots at each other fight. But damn it if Lee doesn't get dramatically oh. killed. Or I'm sorry, not quite killed. He gets like, you know, last words killed. Yes. <laughs> just like nine yeah. words left in him after they shoot him or whatever. And then the lady, the the kimono lady just has this amazing meltdown. Like she's gonna win best grieving scene for a pure, pure flex award later on <laughs> right, in the year. Yeah. She is wailing <laughs> on his corpse. She is just going to town. And then oh, hey, oh so we cut one last time back to the Roxy flashback, right? She's visiting her husband's grave and I just one small fucking point like she's got a photograph of him at the gravesite and it's the same photograph that we had of him earlier which is also the photograph that she put in the book because yeah. this is the one <laughs> photograph of her husband that exists Fuck it's you. all pixelated because she yeah. blew it up from <laughs> that tiny little... <laughs> also, right. it's, it's clearly it's sitting outside this entire time but it's clearly on like a cheap fucking Hobby Lobby bookshelf frame it's not an yeah, all one right. frame <laughs> no. it's like a just the fucking frame it would be a fucking it would be a mess if you went out there are you yeah. kidding me it's, it's definitely coming apart it's a rhombus kind of it's like an expressionist <laughs> photograph yeah. yeah so so yeah so she breaks the the photograph 
right? And they pick up the pieces of glass to cut out their chips, their their Mark of the Beast chips. Her and Brian, the funeral stalker character that we never properly introduced, right? And of course, Christians can't handle that, so that's all happening below the frame lines. They're all just going, ooh, ooh, ow, 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 ow. Ow, ow, yeah, but then ow, they ow. drop the chips and they're like two motherboard size chips. Like they're <laughs> yes. fucking huge. And you're just like, that was in your hand. That's the size of your palm. Like, what the fuck is happening? I love Brian's reaction to that. She like cracks the the, the photo and and grabs pieces of glass and she's like, uh, Brian, can you do it? And he's like, What? <laughs> <laughs> For this this chip, can we use something different, you fucking psychopath? Like, what? I have a lawnmower at home that might be better. <laughs> All right. So, so okay. So, and then we get uh, a quick scene of Roxy and Brian looking out over the hellscape of the city, you know, to see the sequels that is to come. Yeah. The hellscape of Grand Rapids, Chicago. Yeah, absolutely. It's terrifying. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, all right, well, that was a, was a fun broken glass moment. Uh, Sorry, I vomit on you four times. Uh, <laughs> what's next? And she says, we have to tell everyone about this. What? I should probably write in my journal <laughs> and yes. send it to the future as a code. Wait, why are you writing it down? Can't they just look up and see the helicopters and the rubble? Like, what, what yeah. are you going to say? Right, like, yeah, hey, guys, this is bad. <laughs> you know how on fire? This is bad. Thank you, Captain Obvious. We appreciate your input. <laughs> the theme song at the end sounds like Eli making fun of a Christian song sung by a Christian unironically. I'm not even kidding. Oh, you have to. If there's anything you do, fast forward to the end because it's 100% like, like it is 100% Eli making fun of a Christian song. It's the best. Oh, I, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I get to the credits and I bail, right? Oh, I was the fuck oh, I out of this the whole one. Thing. So, I, just, uh. I just drank it and it was amazing. <laughs> I might have to go back for that. Awesome. <laughs> I was hoping they're going to have one of those like post credits Marvel scenes about the amazing <laughs> sequel that they're obviously going to do. Oh, there. Because it literally says to be continued yep, at yeah. the end of this movie. That's ballsy. Unless, of course, you know. It fails miserably and they have no money. <laughs> Speaking of which, Cecil, since those are the two possibilities, either they'll make a sequel or this failed miserably and they have no money, uh, what are the odds that we can get you to make a commitment to come back and do the sequel with us if they ever actually make it? If they ever make a sequel, I will 100% be back to see that actor that was once in Justified. Awesome. All right. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he'll have a bigger role. That it's time. prophecy, buddy. You're yeah. in. <laughs> There's no way the box office numbers Ooh. on this weren't good uh, enough and they spent a million dollars on this movie and ran out of money. Prophecy no 2. That's another movie that Eric Roberts was in. And of course, if our listeners need to hear more from Cecil before this sequel comes out, you can check out the show notes for links to cognitive dissonance and citation needed. Cecil, thank you so much for suffering alongside us, sir. My pleasure, guys. Thanks for having me on. And well, that's going to do it for our review of Rumors of Wars. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to renew our vows. So Heath, tell us what's on deck. The first power. It's uh, the beginning of our Halloween spooktacular. Oh, yeah. And we're doing a movie about exponents. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the easiest one. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. All right. No, yeah, it's time for Eli's Halloween fear nominon or whatever the hell he calls it. So, okay. With that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 267 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Cecil for hanging out with us today and a perhaps even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help us a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms and if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing A, The Citation Data, D&D Minus, and The Skeptocrat, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robinson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Drafts on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions, promising to work hard to earn another chunk nice week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club Club. That CEO had to settle for deadlifting a medium-sized sheep. <laughs> 408 went on to join his big brother's tile scrubbing business. <laughs> <laughs> That's good.
Zern Global went on to invent a vaccine to end a global pandemic. But Christian people wouldn't take it because the V in vaccine looked like demon horns. <laughs> Millions died. <laughs> I don't know if I told you guys this, but I actually panicked at the end of this movie when rumors of wars came on the screen because I literally thought I watched the wrong one because when Eli told me, he said it was rumor of war. And I thought, oh God, did I watch the wrong movie? And I thought oh, for sure <laughs> because the, they were both plural. I thought, oh fuck, I watched the wrong movie and this is only like part one of one of the movies. <laughs> and I was so terrified that I had to watch all other movies. Oh, oh no. God. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.